hello, <laughs> hello. See, hello. It's that, that that few seconds time up. Yeah. See, I, I feel just, like I feel I was like Nora singing along to that. Right. The little, the little beat there. Dum, da, 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 da. <laughs> but I can sing to car alarms. I used to do that a lot. Do you really? Yeah. I find, um, in case everybody has not had a chance to meet the man, the myth, the legend, and I do mm. say that very well, I'd like you all to meet the amazing Daniel Mustard. He is what I like to call the music man. Because oh, uh, you do. You you look at things through musical eyes. I do. And, and, and movies. It, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, for me, I look at a lot of stuff through sports. You know, oh, Mandy, love you. Love you so much, Mandy. Mandy is is joining the chat. Oh, how do I see the comments? Oh, here we go. So click where it says comments, and then you know, I say, oh, I have star. to hit stream this to the to my audience. Yeah, you still have to. That's what we we were doing earlier. You you click stream, and let me pop this up real quick. Um, Cairo um, Kami, thank you so much for becoming a member. I appreciate it. I probably just butchered your name, and I apologize. Yeah, I thought we already did this. So did I. Is it not Access working? Access to Google account. Yes. I don't know. This will allow stream to. Okay. Oh, yes. Allow. We already did this. This is. Oy vey. Oh, now it wants information from me. Well, what we can a, do. I'll walk you through. It wants a title and description. Yeah, just say it live with Liz. Oh, did I, this I don't think we did already, but. Okay, so so what I do is I do like live with Liz um, to make it easier. Like mine is is live with Daniel Mustard. Uh, right. Make it simple. All right, it's okay. public, and mm -hmm. it's saying scheduled for later. Like oh, and we're streaming now. I feel like such an asshole. It's totally okay. The stream is no already live. Gonna... Okay. Yep. All right. It's totally okay. Now, now I, you're are we real? You're streaming. You're streaming. Ah, I see the button. I'm in the world now. I've come out of my hovel. Gollum is, is out of the sun. The sun. Hello. Welcome to uh, my nightmare. It is. The, it's not my nightmare. My nightmare no, it's just, is definitely. It's just Alice. It's just Alice Cooper. It's just a song <laughs> reference. I just okay. Gotta... So I was like, my nightmare is totally I... um, sitting in a course room. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that is not that's not a nightmare. That's a literal like Dante's. Inferno. Inferno. Kind of yeah. Um, seventh ring of hell. <laughs> so but, I want to say uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I see Sophia, obviously Mandy. Um, music is what's needed today. Yes. Yes. And this man's music definitely makes me feel better. Hooray. Don't forget that we do have the chat rules. No hate speech, derogatory remarks, spamming, no debates, no fighting. No, talking about other streams or promos, please be kind and respect the hosts, guest mods, yeah, and Pokemon cards. That's because someone messaged and said they threw them away, and I was very traumatized oh. because I have my collection, and then my other collection, and then my other collection. And there's so much more. There's so much more. Me and my ex, we used to have a whole bunch of Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. We had a whole wall of Nightmare Before Christmas, including three snow, three giant snow globes. Nice. Which were gorgeous, just gorgeous. So, like, I have the foot and a half bobblehead of Harry Potter and Groot, um, because Groot. that is what we left. I am Groot. Groot. I am Groot. Oh, Groot is great. I'm doing it, Mandy. I'm popping you up. This is Mandy, the amazing mod. Okay. A Furby. I was going to say, I don't know if you read Brett Easton Ellis, but he wrote a book about Furby, so that really scared me for a second. Where they come to life and try to kill him in his own home kind of thing. I love Furbies. <laughs> if they ever make that movie, you, you, you might think differently. Yeah, you might. You might. It might scare you. <laughs> Hi, Furby. Uh, yes, this is my amazing um, mod, Mandy. She is in the back stream, so she gets to click things. She's got her multiple hairs. I've got She's mine got that green. is out of order. No, yeah. I hide mine. Mine's falling out in droves, running away. Yeah, well, you know. And I got a great big scar on my head. What's this now? This is a this That's is one a, of the toys like from, from Nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I recognize it. That's cool. Yeah. I, uh, there. Dan, let's talk about Danny Elfman. <laughs> you want to talk about? You want to talk oh, about Mr. Love, Elfman? I just as far as like music Danny. and the, one of the reasons I love that movie so much is is, is his music. 
What's this? Beetlejuice is my favorite. Yeah, Beetlejuice, Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. And uh, I do love that. They're coming out with a new Beetlejuice. Are they really? Um, Keaton coming yeah. out back to back? Boy, what a comeback this dude is making. It's a bird. Right? right? And he's the Falcon, and he's he's going to be, eventually he's going to end up being Batman again. True. <laughs> he'll, win, he'll win an Oscar for being like the old man Batman who finally dies. I'm guessing, Daniel, you listened to Oingo Boingo, too? Yeah, Dead Man's Party. <laughs> I, just, funny, <laughs> I, I just watched Weird Science the other day. Oh, my God. I love that movie. Yeah, it's a fun movie. Weird Science. Ooh. Um, Sorry for the mess. I am doing my laundry. <laughs> oh yeah, no, laundry is a not is a never ending process here. It's it's. I'm so embarrassed because the dog too often is like curled up in a pile of dirty laundry. That seems to be one of her favorite places to be, and I feel like a bad bad daddy, bad do- doggy daddy because she does it. Well, but- uh, mine is out rompaging around. We've got one laying in their bed. Oh, I think they're all rompaging. So. Well, that's good. That's good they have each other. Like, I worry she doesn't rompage enough. I don't know, because she's half pit, and sometimes people are kind of weird about pit bulls. And then I'm really weird. I'm not sure which it is that turns people off more, me or her, but together, I think people are just confused, and they just want to walk on by. See, and, <laughs> and, so I get that a lot. So what I usually end up doing, and this might be totally wrong, I have really bad allergies now. Didn't have them before, but for some reason, whenever I say, hold on, everybody, I'm trying not to give you the gay and I start sneezing, it's, <laughs> it, it just cuts, it cuts through all of the red tape and everybody's That's like, great. I appreciate you not giving me the gay because it's hella contagious. Because it's totally contagious, right? <laughs> don't look, don't look. Right. No. It's that, remember the meme that's like, don't look, the little kid's looking at something gay and the mother's like, don't look. And he's, it's Covering too late, mommy. And, and the rainbows are shooting out of him. The mm-hmm. gay agenda is more glitter that's the gay yeah. agenda yeah that's more the, the gay agenda is literally <laughs> glitter. it's it's actually if you if you ask um the love of my life it's unicorn and rainbows is yeah, the gay agenda that's what we need we need that do you remember the the poop thing where it was like uh, unicorn shit there was something about it was it was oh was, the squatty <laughs> potty yeah. oh my god it's oh, the, yeah, squatty the squatty potty. potty we have one which is a very good <laughs> idea because that's a better position to poo in because otherwise you're cutting your intestines and <laughs> anyway whatever it's just you're true it off in the wrong it's spot. just true you know there's a for a, forever for centuries man, humanity is squatted to shit and it wasn't until the Victorian era we decided we had to sit on a fucking throne well. <laughs> True. Uh, Tommy Anderson. Hey, everyone. First live. Uh, Liz, you're doing amazing. Hey, thank you so very much. Everyone. Sophia, Sassy Sister, Kathy, Witness, Tony, Kelly, Ginger Snap. I have not said hi to everybody because this is going to be an open conversation. Should I say hi to people? Spirit in the sky blue. (laughs) That's right. Spirit in the sky. Spirit in the sky. Um, Hey, as long as it's not... Um, oh God, how did that one go that when we were kids? And I dang it, I don't remember it. Had the time of my life. <laughs> no, it's uh, the it used to be the intro intro to the bridge to total freedom. It was um Elrich's voice doing the and I, and then it would intro into one of those creepy songs. Like oh God, one of I the many know. creepy songs. What do I that remember? We there is a road to happiness. Whatever the rest may say. I remember singing that in the fucking choir in front of people. <laughs> hey, I remember. Or going- we did or we did a rewriting of the 12 Days of Christmas, where it was datums from TAC, where it was clear your amuse, like that kind of shit, instead of five gold rings. <laughs> five golden rings. <laughs> no, it was- four big lashings, three never right. eaten, two oh, getting God. Yeah, we could do this. Uh, like, yeah, I could totally do that one. The five days, the twelve days of Christmas, with with how bad things were. No, well, no, I'm talking about being like programmed little like Nazi child in a Scientology school singing like, <laughs> sing, sing, you know, singing in a pro like, oh yeah, these are the. Oh, that's how I felt about singing hymns in church. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh God, it's, it's the awesome same concept. God. All the praise goes to He, but at least like God is something that seems at least bigger than you, or fathomable, than touchable. 
No, no God, well, no, I just mean like God at least is presented in the Christian notion is a gigantic thing. Whereas mm -hmm. we're just there with this guy. Yeah. This, this balding, weird, ruddy faced guy with bad teeth. With bad teeth. <laughs> that's that's our dude. You know, at least Jesus yeah. is good looking. He's got those <laughs> abs. He's got the he's got the hipster beard going. You know, he's hot. Jesus he is fuckable. He was hipster before it was cool. Amen. L. Ron Hubbard was <laughs> never fuckable. Never fuckable. Not at any point no. in his life. That's part of his damage. Harvey Weinstein, yeah, he's, he's, never fuckable. That's part of his damage. That's why they're like this. <laughs> you know what my favorite here. part was? So listening Donald to you, Trump. Sorry. Damageable. But so I used to walk around because I would go to church with when I'd visit my grandmother. My grandma would take me to church um, in Sacramento. We went to Holy Family Church in case anybody needed to know what kind of church and denomination. Okay. So I would sit there and I would be walking from course to course. Jesus is my caution. You know, literally a constant friend. No, the, the, the Christian music that annoys me is the all the like, I'm nothing, you're everything. That that Christian, that's the base kind of Christian yeah. concept that offends me the most because it completely disempowers you as a person. You have and nothing, you, have no you do nothing, person. nothing you do is worth anything, nothing matters because yeah. everything is God's plan and God has everything. And it's like, ugh, Yeah, the and then you're basically there. like a sinner right out the womb, so you oh, have yeah. to constantly repent. Original I grew up in a sin. Southern Baptist. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so that's, we just grew up that we were born sinners heavy. like from that's a previous a life. Shit. Yeah, yeah, in Scientology, right. We were, we're sinners even to have be, be here in the first place. We've been sent mm -hmm. to prison. We yep. were, I mean, we isn't were, that like a typical notion in religion slash cults? Like you are no good, so therefore you must keep doing these repentant yeah, type it's, things. It's a basic indoctrination. We see it in advertising. The Rolling Stones wrote a great song about how you're inadequate as a human if you don't use the same toothpaste, right? That's the gimmick all the way. Oh my God, you're failing. You suck. Don't worry. We have the solution. It's even if, we, even if we've created the problem in the first place, we have the solution. Politics is all about that. Letting shitty things happen, then coming back behind and going, oh, we'll fix it. Instead of preventing the shitty thing from happening in the first yeah. place. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> that doesn't, doesn't read as well in the press. True. You know, looking like sure. a hero is much more like, you know, whatever. I'm not going to get into it. But looking like a hero is much more politically advantageous than actually preventing a tragedy from happening. Preventing, yeah. you know, not that's how about we don't pollute the groundwater to begin with, you know, rather than having to give everybody bottled water. Yeah, anyway. I've basically spent like every day that I've gotten out of the church. I'm 42 now. I left when I was 24 ish, 23. And uh, I've spent like every day just trying to figure out like, why do we do this as humans? Why do they, why do we do this to each other? Which part? The containment, like, the control, the, abuse, the, the control. Oh. Like, <laughs> so much why? of it's about control. I think, you know, someone like Ellen it's Hubbard power. and David Miscavige. David Miscavige is clearly a terrified little shaking little animal. And so he's got to do any, every, you know, he's a classic Napoleon. He's got to hit and just come at everything a thousand pounds heavier than anything needs to be because he's so fucking scared. And that's what he does. I don't know what else, you know, I've never actually spoken to the man, but he used to come into the office. He used to come into Shaw sometimes. He was buddies with, with uh, Dr. Price. And he's, he is the definition of a little Napoleon. He, mar he would march down that little hallway on his little tiny little spindly legs. We talk about how short he is. You don't realize how how tiny he is beyond that and people would duck out of his way would jump out of his way he was such a little little motor monster but so yeah so someone like that is desperate to have some control because he's got none really in the real world he would have none in the real world he'd be a tiny little person with nothing with no power no control over anything he weighs 98 pounds soaking wet and he has no formal education he doesn't seem to have any real ability what would he do in the real world he you know, I don't want to demean anybody by saying he'd do a thing, whatever he'd do a thing, but not what he's got, you know, in this way, he gets to yeah. be the king, king in the castle. He gets to eat caviar mm -hmm. and suck dick or whatever it is he does. Um, him and Tom Cruise, whatever it is they do. Whatever they, they, that is that they do behind closed doors. <laughs> is. I know enough about the crazy things that go on between men behind closed doors to know that, you know, everybody would be shocked to know. How much is always this? I don't know. Whatever. Let's not get into that. Everybody's uh, gay. 
Not well, it, well, as it, right, Kurt Cobain. <laughs> what else can I say? Everyone is gay. And to some extent, perhaps, you know, I think that's the the, the, the whole point of um, the shades of gray, the in-between, the spectrum, as it were, right? Mm-hmm. So like, in this is one of those things I blame a religion for, binary thinking. Religion hands you mm-hmm. binary thinking. Everything is either good or bad black or white, up or down. And there's no in between. But we all know if you've lived a little life that most of life actually exists in between. Mm -hmm. And we ignore too much of that too often. And particularly with with, with sexuality because people are so afraid of it. We've been conditioned to be so terrified of our own sexuality. Like you said, putting it in in the context of being sinful and original sin. Uh, from the very beginning, already you're bad. I mean, like to me, it blows my mind the idea that telling a pubescent mammal <laughs> that there's something wrong with them for thinking about sex. Like there'd be something wrong with you if you weren't thinking about sex while going through puberty. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But religion wants to tell you that you're you're sinful for thinking ha- yeah. for having dirty thoughts. And that's just, you yeah, know. Yeah, Yeah. it's a, I cannot with the whole purity culture thing. And I mean. (laughs) And Scientology picks up on that shit too. And it frustrates the fuck out of me because if nothing else, Scientology presents itself as being a spiritually minded theology. So like issues of gender and sexuality and race, none of that should matter at all, at all. You know, this is about if 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 you're going to take it seriously as unfortunately. Well, like the one thing that I bring up to people that don't realize this with like, I think Mormons have the same thing, evangelicals and Southern Baptists, where like girls aren't even supposed to use tampons because that's considered masturbation. Right. It's penetration. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. obsessed with the penetration. That's where they get into okay. like when they know there's something wrong with their theology. So they get obsessive and pedantic about the language. Mm hmm. Um, what were you going to say, Liz? I was going to say, honestly, if you would have told me that I had to wear it, because I know that for the longest time when they were doing the preps and stuff, like the girls that were older than me would always tell me, and you get to wear a pad soon. And I could hear them going, squish, 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 squish. Like wearing a like, diaper. It sounds like you're wearing a diaper. Like it literally sounds like you were wearing... A depends. There was, there was and, some, something in a movie or something where a girl like was given like she had her period for the first time and she's given this old tampon rig from like her grandmother that's like a garter belt that has like a strap on it and there's clips and shit. Like I can't imagine. That's why girls back. That's why women back then wore those giant hoop skirts. So you couldn't, so they, you the, wouldn't see the blood. You couldn't hear the squishing. <laughs> so you couldn't oh. hear the squishing. <laughs> oh, the skirt was already squishing enough, so it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's insane it's insane you think about women in garter belts and fucking hoop skirts and god only knows how they you know survived i don't know the entire basis oh, really? for seventh day Adventist was being vegetarian because it ruins it it reduces sex drive see why i will We're- tell you when i eat a salad there's there's some times that i'm like you know what i want to eat someone else's salad uh, <laughs> some people like syrup, but I prefer jelly. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh! She's tossing. That's yeah. That's vegan tossing salad. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Um, just as long as that's ridiculous. See why? Why is there such a? a, a, a why is it sex? Well, this obsession with sex? And it's pure. It's the Puritans. It's the Puritans. We we were. Here's another false notion. We sold this idea that the Puritans were escaping religious persecution, but actually they were trying to persecute everybody else. They didn't want the progress that was occurring with the Protestants and the Reformation. So they were the ones being the old school bitches, going, "We want the you know, we want the fucking Middle Ages back," and they. Didn't want the middle. They didn't want it back. They said, no, we got rid of the Catholic thing for a reason. We broke away from the Catholic thing for a reason. And so they were chased out of Europe. That's how the Puritans came to America. Europe was not sending their best people. No. <laughs> at no. any point. Most of the original colonists were a bunch were criminals and, and religious fanatics. Of course, that's what we ended up with. That's the that's America, right? Criminals mm-hmm. and religious fanatics. Oh, hold on one second. Liz, what about SDA? I grew up and uh, didn't hear about sex drive being a vegetarian. Um, 
I'm just brain farting. What's SDA? I'm seventh day. Seventh day. Oh, oh okay. Um, I don't know a lot about it, but my friend Sharice, um, she does. She was brought up as a seventh day Adventist. Her mom still practices. Uh, Aren't these the ones that like pre- the guy predicted the end of the world like a yeah. long time I mean, ago and it never happened. All doomsday cult. And they kind of go, well, yeah. we'll just keep going anyway. Yeah, just keep going. <laughs> at it's least, like the Mayans. At least the there's calendar ten- ends, but. Right. At least, right. The calendar ended, but we well, got At least those ten issue guys have the audacity, you know, have the good good graces to f- finish themselves <laughs> off. That's not a good joke. No. But there's commitment there. There's commitment there, is all I'm saying. True. There was definitely commitment to drink the Kool-Aid. That's the one thing that I'm I'm worried about is the next step in Scientology is you're already drinking the Kool-Aid because you're giving them hundreds of thousands of dollars just to go up the bridge to total nothingness um and then at the same time you're you're evading the the part of your family that just needs your love and affection and yet we're supposed to be like yay Scientology is an amazing thing but well, like you and I were talking like we were we needed approval and mm. the only way I got approval was finishing courses or auditing. Right. That's part of the hook. Is so there's this complete, like, right. Um, the, the idea of unconditional love was not a thing we knew. All of any approval was all conditional to following the rules, um, which I was never following ever. So I never felt like anybody loved me, even in the slightest, certainly not my parents. Um, but wait, what were you saying? There was some point I wanted to make to what you said, and I've lost my own train of thought. Um, that everything came with conditions, whether it was auditing, um, like you got love. Oh my God, you finished yeah. your auditing course. Oh my God. Hug. Right. And so we learned that that's part of the, that's what I was saying. That's part of the cult training is the, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. Unless here it's like, it's like giving a treat to a dog to, to, to formulate a behavior. So the, the dog just keeps repeating the behavior because it knows it gets a treat, not necessarily because it knows what the behavior is about. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's how we were trained. Yeah. And it's it's nature of abuse. There's a lot of this sort of conditioning in just sort of basic abusive relationships. But that's what he did. He cultivated <laughs> um, a, a domestic abuse into into the religion, into the mm-hmm. theology. He's yeah, psycho- just like <laughs> just like how a wife is supposed to act. Oh yeah, yeah. how a husband is supposed to act. And it's of this course book is garbage. And just like his sci-fi, everything is just coincidentally just like it was in the 1950s America. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, I should put her pussy on the screen. Oh no, is that allowed on YouTube? <laughs> 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 Meow. Yeah. Hold on. That's the closest I could do. <laughs> um, I don't know a lot. The lore of DOA. Oh. Scotty. Free, free Danny. Ooh. Is that free Danny Masterson? Who are the, who's the free? No, Danny, Danny is one of the YouTubers. Um, that oh, the DOA guy. He was arrested uh, just like DOA and oh, he was different. swatted and now he's being held on a hate crime. Like wasn't even doing anything. And he's now being held on a hate crime. No, it's insane. The police are insane these days. Last time I had police interaction, I was, um, Oh, that's right. We called it. I called an ambulance. I called an ambulance one morning for because i was having a panic i didn't even call somebody else did it doesn't matter who called the point is the police show up first uh-huh. and rather than dealing with a, a medical emergency they came in like they were dealing with some criminal like they were raiding the place uh-huh. and this cop was and so i'm literally having a, i'm hyperventilating i'm sitting on my bed i'm literally hyperventilating and the cop comes over and he's supposed to be guarding me i guess and he's got his dick right in my face and at a certain moment, I was like, I was kind of like coming, you know, kind of getting a little more aware of what was going on. And I asked him, excuse me, officer, could you back up a little bit? Nothing. Yo, dude, could you back up? Yo, bro. You know, I tried to relate to him as a person. Nah. Tried to relate to him as an officer. Nah. Eventually, I was like, yo, you know, but I don't remember. I said, yo, or something. I made a noise. And he looks down at me and he just sort of steps to the side. Not away, not to back off. And he goes, there, I moved. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And I called him a little Napoleon, which is my bad, I realize. But the truth, nonetheless. True. <laughs> they don't like that I was being hurt. Apparently, you're not allowed to talk to police like they're human. 
apparently you're supposed to respond to them like they're robots, like they want to be like robots, I guess. It feels like they're training cops to be robots, completely sociopathic. The notion used to be that every every citizen interaction was a potential criminal. Now it seems the assumption is that all interaction is not just criminal, but potentially a terrorist or a drug dealer or something like something really over the top. And there's never just, hi, I'm just a person in the world having a problem. Can you relate to another human right now? Nah, they got nothing. They got nothing. These motherfuckers handcuffed me, dragged me out into the hall in my fucking underwear, and then laughed at me as the as the EMT crew rolled me away. Police. Protect and yeah. serve, right? No. Right. And see, that's where it gets disgusting because it's like, um, I had someone at my house and this, not recently, I had someone at my house and it was one of those situations. Am I allowed to do this? Is that okay? Yeah. Sorry, okay. You can, know. you can. Some people are very offended by cigarette smoking these days, even more so than the worst of things. I'm fat. The worst that you can see is I'll eat. Like, don't put a bowl of spaghetti in front of me. Like, <laughs> 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 but. The at the same time, I, I hear you on the spaghetti, right? Time with ice like, cream. Especially the. I'd rather sure. have pasta, even. I'd rather have yeah. spaghetti than ice cream. Wait, I am on. all about, and it's got to be Sherbert? spicy spaghetti. Yeah, Sherbert I love Sherbert. over ice cream. Yeah, I love rainbow sherbet. How is it going to be wrong? Like, that's some gay. <laughs> how is it going to be wrong? That's some conviction to the gay to the gay rainbow man. Yeah, I got to hit that skittles. Got to taste the rainbow. Yeah. No. Um, when I was a kid, Thrifties used to have the best, like their the, the ice little cream. corner cut, the little corner, yeah, uh, corner that street, little store by by, uh, by Wendy's. So you had the Thrifties, and it was twenty five cents for a scoop of ice cream, like thirty five. It wasn't even a scoop; you. it was a little like pressed like square of ice cream. It was the funniest yeah. little shape of ice cream, the little gun, little uh, <laughs> like a staple gun or something. Yeah, and and so it was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they put it on the top, and let me tell you. <laughs> They had the best rainbow sherbet that I've ever had in my so entire funny. life. And I would just sit there walking back to the org. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was it. Thrifties, man. That was the deal. Yeah. Thrifties it was, the was, thrifties, was our I think, jam. On our, I want to say it was like Sunset and Argyle. And there was like a strip mall that was all Western themed. We yeah. had not just yeah. an ice cream truck, but we also had a snow cone truck that came through my neighborhood. Oh, wow. That's interesting. And I loved yeah. getting snow cones with like uh, the liquidy marshmallow stuff on the top. You must not have grown up in a cult because we didn't have ice cream trucks come into the blue area. Like well, There was an ice cream truck that came around on Cherimoya. It was an ice cream truck that came down Cherimoya when I was a kid. I was like, just I, a regular, I don't remember just a ever regular seeing one. an ice cream truck. Like ever. Just like, you know, when people used to tell me there's, you know, I here here's something. Didn't have a lot of um, dark and tan friends when I was a kid. I yeah. I remember the first time I had seen someone that was of darker skin, and I was like, I remember asking my mom, you know, are, are, is their skin dirty? You know, and my mom was like, no, that's just their skin color, and I was like, and this is from growing we? up in the in the Connecticut area, yeah, at Pack Base. Okay, so we didn't. You know, so I had never, and I was just like, you're just the prettiest person ever. Your skin. So well, yeah, that was definitely more isolating. Um, but between, yeah, that's funny. I have a well, friend who's are, from Kiev. Kids are hilarious like that, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a friend who's from Kiev, and he he tells a story about being in a post office for the, fir- the first time he saw a black man. And he was like 11 and like freaked out. But he's from Kiev. You know, he's from some other place completely. Yeah, see, I grew up in a place that was basically 50-50. Um, but I was also grow, grew up with racist grandparents. So oh, that's fine. Yeah, no. I wasn't allowed to have black guy friends, but the girls were okay. Because I was told that well, all the, the black people no, would. No. That's that's the probably the most kind of like bad things. fucked yeah. up and like consistent um racial epitaph is this idea that black men are just chronic sex maniacs yeah and, and that's I mean, in, I grew in, up to kill a mockingbird too. that's that's the situation yeah. right? love to kill a mockingbird he has the white woman has an affair with the black man she gets caught and rather than copying to her own whatever misdeed, yeah. she accuses him of rape and that was a, a constant thing that was a common thing for a long time 
and even to the point like the FBI, like they have this whole thing. Like if it's nondescript black guy, then it's probably the parents. Like, well, if you look at saying, any of the history on how race came about to begin with, how we categorized race, it's just insane. Like three fifths a person? You mean that kind of thing? Yeah, that whole that whole thing where like if you were you know, had one parent that was black, you're this name. If you had a grandparent that was black, you're categorized as this. Or like in Australia, they went through a whole thing. I'm sorry. In Australia, they went through a whole thing where they were kidnapping indigenous children who were mixed Mm -hmm. in order to try to re-whiten them. That's what they they did here too and in Canada. Oh, that's crazy. The the Indian boarding schools. Yeah, one of my teachers, her mom was one of the the last ones. Because the Indian boarding schools, the last one that closed in the United States was like 96. Uh, Canada, they were still going on for a bit longer. But that's what they would tell these children. You're dirty. You have to constantly wash your hands. Get that dirt off. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's it's insane. (laughs) Or like there's old soap ads you see every (laughs) once in a while where it's a little white girl and a little black girl and they're cleaning off the little black girl. Like those, you still see them sometimes. Whoopi Goldberg used to do a bit about being a little black girl and she put a yellow t-shirt on her head and pretend to be a white girl with long, luxurious blonde hair. And there's a famous photograph of her in a big bubble bath that Annie Leibovitz took, supposedly trying to wash the black off because that was part of the bit was, you know, comes back around to the pain of. That's a good movie. Guess who's coming to dinner? Oh, yeah. Have you heard that one? Oh yeah, it's a classic. Have you seen that? Yeah, great yeah. movie. Because I remember a lot of those movies were coming out around that time where they were trying to show interracial um, relationships and stuff. I don't know. I feel like we, you know, like something like Different Strokes to me, like means means more than even I guess was coming to dinner, or just the mainstream of like in my lifetime I've watched the presentation of God in film go from George Burns, one of the whitest men on the planet, to Morgan Freeman. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah. like Kanye West, for example, what the sort of public breakdown that he's had is the sort of thing that used to be a Howard Hughes. Rich white men did that. Not black men, but there he is. He's got the privilege of being that that elite in that world of whatever it is, wealth and celebrity, that he's insulated and he can go live in the basement of, a, of an arena somewhere and nobody really bats an eyelash at it. Right, it's a whole nother... If, if, if his grandfather were like that, it would be a whole nother thing it would be seen a whole nother way okay yep yeah but anyway the point i was making was uh yeah that's you know the present the re- representation the representation and that's well, the same you know, thing in in music too like changed. a lot of um black music was not given the platform that they uh deserved yeah yeah, yeah. especially like when elvis was and a lot of people out. not giving credit a lot of people yeah. not giving credit for where credit was due um, I can't remember her name, but the woman who is probably more, more, in, more um, a part of creating rock and roll than you. Yeah, the the woman I forgot what did, her name is off the top of my head, but I know who you're talking about. Who originally did uh, not blue suede shoes, but uh, um, the Hound, dog. Dog? Hound Dog, Hound Dog, yeah, the woman who I believe wrote Hound Dog. Yeah, um, ain't not but a hound dog. dog. And then you listen, you re- you realize that, and you go, "Well, of course a woman wrote that. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Of course a woman wrote that. You know, what right?" I mean? And it's the way they say it. It's literally all about, "You ain't nothing but a hound dog." No, hell, and all the time, it's that there's a thing, there's a word for it, the space in the back of your throat, and it's kind of like pushing the note back in there. Yeah, I love the way that she sung. Another one that um, just is super underrated for me is a guy named Skip James, who did this blue song called Devil Got My Woman. And it is the most haunting piece of music I have ever heard. And I first heard it on the movie soundtrack for um, Ghost World. Oh, um, I suggest I re- recommend that oh, to like it's everybody. Probably one of the songs James, Steve, Steve Buscemi Devil Got My Woman. Yeah, okay, it's in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the song. Yeah, the like that- it just there's something about that old style of blues. It's not just the music; it's the way oh. that they they yeah. use their throat and yeah. their voice. Big Mama Thornton, thank you, Tim Green. I knew how to do with Green. Mama something. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't yeah. Oh, Big Mama. <laughs> Space Spirito. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for, for letting us know. That, that is an amazing imagining. song. Yeah, so that's a big part of what I guess. Yeah, music has been part of my life 
from the get go and living with different generations. I had so much different music presented to me. My grandfather gave me the fifties and sixties rock and roll. My grandmother was really into, you know, old country. I had my mom into like Leonard Skinner. My uncle was into punk. So I got like tons of music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, around me. You the soundtrack of your life kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I'm trying to think of the soundtrack to my life. And it. Um, my mom loves classical music. It's all about the Bach, the Beethoven. It's all about the loves. Bach, about the Bach, Beethoven. <laughs> 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 or she likes the, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I like country too. I am very eclectic when it comes to, to music, but you know, uh, I don't really know country music. People always expect me to be more country. I grew up on all, well, no, when I was a kid, it was hip hop. You know, when I was a kid, Belle Biv DeVoe and um, Dizzle Underground, those were, and LL Cool J were the, like the mainstream guys. And then MC Hammer came along and kind of ruined it for me. And then alternative, like, you know, R.E.M. I, I heard R.E.M. and the Pixies and Violent Thumbs and stuff like that. And I got very engaged in that, very invested in that. Um. But I don't really know country music. But when I was a kid, there was a lot of country crossovers from like Dolly Parton mm -hmm. and Willie Nelson, Kenny Rogers, people like that. Yeah. Shania Twain. But they were all stories. That's, that's in the nineties. I'm talking about yeah, that. that story. That's the that's the yeah that's the 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 uh, the story time thing. genre. That's the Ray Charles thing. I like the stories. <laughs> yeah, and I will tell you, that's the night. <laughs> that's that much more Jamie Fox in Georgia. Georgia. Good Georgia, song. oh Georgia. Uh -huh. No peace of mind. That's a gorgeous got, song. That's one of those legendary standard kind of songs that's just like blows your mind how good that song is. But I think Adele's in that category. We were talking about that earlier, and I can't tell you how many times I I would listen to um, someone like you and be like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Never mind, I'll find. It's so funny. Every time I heard someone like you, I was always thinking of Sinead O'Connor's "Nothing Compares to You." No. Compared the video to in particular totally reminded me of the Sinead O'Connor video. <laughs> There's an unsung hero of mine, Sinead O'Connor, and she passed recently, and I'm pissed mm -hmm. that she's like so underrated. Um, because she was fucking genius. And she's just but she's so remembered for that one song. I don't think people realize how much more she had or how much more she did. Well, yeah. Well, um, how many what was that guy? Well, the news the, tore her apart, the mainstream my, media tore my her apart. Heart. Well, she I did the I, well, that's no, that's Miley Cyrus's dad. Yeah, Billy Ray, Ray Cyrus. Cyrus. Billy Ray Billy Cyrus. Cyrus yeah. Yeah. The one hit one. Because like, Sinead O'Connor ripped up the picture of the Pope. The Pope. On SNL there was a bunch of that, things. Like, Wait, there was a bunch of things. There was. Yeah. She didn't. She refused to go to the Grammys. She kind of poo-pooed mm -hmm. the whole institution of award shows. She went on Arsenio Hall and did not really articulate her point well enough, in my opinion. But she tried. Um, there was a bunch of things. Yeah, she tore up the Pope. The picture of the Pope. Because she was protesting what it took the rest of us 20 years to catch up to. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like it put spotlight. Oh, now everybody knows that priests are fucking kids. But didn't we all, you know, she, the Catholic, Irish yeah. Catholics knew that a long time ago. Um, so that's what she was protesting. And then she went off and got herself ordained to a fucking Catholic priest. And then at the end of the day, converted to Islam right before she passed. Yeah. So she was a very religious, very complicated. adventurously, yeah. religiously adventurous. Um, she wanted to know it all. Good for her. Because she, you know, and that's what happens when you grow up in a culture where people are lying to you all the time. You get, obs you get obsessed Apple with the truth. kind of like that for me, too. Like, she did a lot of pushback. Like, when she would win awards at, like, MTV or something, Fiona she Apple, would be yeah. like, don't listen to these people. Don't, like, she said, basically, don't praise me. Do your own thing. Praise your own yeah. thing. And people took that like her being a bitch. But I thought she was trying yeah, to be empowering. Yeah, and I thought it was amazing. She was trying to be empowering to her fans. And instead, people made a thing out of it. But that's, you know, media bullshit, right? Yeah, I remember MTV, MTV always trying to make out like there was some beef between Kurt Cobain and Eddie Vedder, and there never was. I think uh, media like or entertainment needs to like have a beef between anybody. Like they just like to pick. Well, that's what's so You know, it really is a reflection of our culture, though. They wouldn't create bullshit if we didn't buy into it. We love it. Right. We want the junk food so bad. We crave it. 
And so that's what they provide for us because that's what gets the clicks. That's what makes the money. Rupert Murdoch said it in his deposition. It's not about blue or red. It's all about the green. It's all about the green. And that is the capitalistic motivation. That is the problem with the, with the profit motive. If you can justify everything down to it's all about the Benjamins, well, then you can justify just about anything. You know, you can yeah. do anything, you know, and that's what people do. They go, well, what really matters is the revenue. What really matters is the money. Without the money, we're all going to die anyway. So kill some people to make some money. And yeah. that's, that's the world we live in. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the worst part, and, and thinking of that, that's, that's how I used to view Scientology when I was a kid. They didn't care about anything, but the money that was coming in. And when you're working and you know, even better than I do, but when you're working in that environment where the pressure is on th Thursday, the, the stat evolution, you got to get the thing, got to get the thing. And you're like desperate to do anything. And there's this, constant attitude like if you really wanted to do it you would just do it already right mm -hmm. yeah tone 40 you would have already right, done right, it right 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 if you really you're wanted done. it done it would be done already it's like fuck you man <laughs> you're asking me to move a mountain right here i sing these lyrics all the time about oh don't worry i'll, I'll get to that mountain i'll move that mountain any, at any time now and that's exactly what that's a reference to if you ever notice lyrics like that the the casual ask for the impossible act would you mind just you know separating the stars for a minute no 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 big deal mm -hmm. yeah would I'll get you right, mind you know i'll get right on that with my tone 40. yep right right there <laughs> right there with you because like I'm, I'm totally there i'm i'm oh i'm there right now oh i guess i went down in tone uh, no we're one one we're one one liz remember yeah, we're, we're yeah, covert hostility <laughs> we're co co covertly hostile and passive aggressive and we're just no, going to stab everyone no, no, in the here, back. Here, here's a point to make. Okay, here's a point to make. Again, L. Ron Hubbard, he's stuck in a 1950s old man mentality. Okay, so in his world, it was literally illegal to be gay. That being outed would completely destroy your life. Whatever sort of profession you had, whatever sort of family you had, whatever sort of community you had was gone. You know, we saw some of the greatest minds of our past be completely destroyed by being outed just as, because they were gay. Like the, the, the Turing guy who created mm -hmm. the computer, right? Um, Oscar Wilde also. Um, and so in his world, yes, I'm sure most gay men were really passive aggressive. I'm sure most gay men were really pissed about it. You know what? I'm not sure. I know. I know how pissed you are because I spent a great deal of my life in the closet. So I know exactly how pissed off you are. I know exactly why you come off as one one because fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm not allowed to just be some fundamental part of myself because you've all decided there's something wrong with it and you don't even know what you're fucking talking about. So God damn it, I'm passive aggressive. Of course I'm covertly hostile because I'm not allowed to be overtly hostile. I'm not allowed to get in your face and tell you what's wrong with what you're doing, motherfucker. So what else option do I have? Yeah. So like, fine. In 1950, in pre-Stonewall America, sure, I'm sure most gay men were passive aggressive as fuck. But yeah, most of them didn't even. Oh, care. sorry. Most of them were scared of being killed by um, a tire iron. Right. When you live in a world where your whole, you know, at any minute somebody might come after you. And here's mm -hmm. what Christian, here's what I've noticed of Christian homophobic, homophobic men is they not only feel like they have the right to put hands on you and hurt you. They feel like it's their obligation. Like somehow because you're fucking yeah. up the Christian rules so hard, it's their job to punish you for it. And I don't know where that comes from because that's not the Christ, you know, that's not the love, the sinner and hate the sin kind it's of mentality. It's not just like their own internal insecurities. Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. Like bubbling to the <laughs> surface. Yeah. Yes. Ultimately, well, yes. Ultimately, yeah. yes. Usually the guy who wants to beat up the gay kid kind of wants to fuck the gay kid. The impulse to fuck and the impulse to fight are almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I came out in the 90s, mid 90s. Um, and I honestly did not expect the backlash that I got. I thought I had a better group of friends than I did. And I actually lost a lot of people. And these are Scientology friends or Christian friends? Christ or just regular friends at high school oh. Oh. that I grew up with. Um, yeah, like I 90s, had in the '90s, it was all about coming out. Everybody was coming out in the '90s. Yeah, but it Heck was no, still. I, I kept that shit to myself. Like, you want to do dirt? No, yeah, we're just mm -mm. Shh, shh, don't say it. Don't so, say the gay. 
Liz, I want to ask you something about Celebrity Center, because I remember a lot of very butch women who ran that place. <laughs> how, how many how many DL lesbians were running around the hall? Honestly, <laughs> I, I, I thought there was, when it came to uh, the amount of gay, you know, women, I, I thought everyone, every single person that had a short haircut, not like my hair short, but like would have the, the pixie. Okay, let's give you an example. You got 50 women that got the pixie cut that just wake up in the morning and do the... Sharon Stone. That's Sharon Stone, man. She did the pixie cut and everybody, every woman of a certain age suddenly had a pixie cut. Yeah. And suddenly they all had the pixie cut. So then I'm seeing all these pixie cuts and all I can think is, is you gay? <laughs> My ex had a pixie cut. Ah, that makes sense. <laughs> I, I've never had a pixie cut. Um, I got close to a pixie cut. Hey, you put enough product in that hair, you could get a pixie cut out of it. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, if you put product in and spiked it up, you know, Love you, it Kevin. could be similar. I'm in here. No, it's but, the it's the uh, the straight boy haircut. Yeah, it was, uh, which is funny because like I I got put in lower conditions because I went shorter than a pixie. It was like 107 degrees. Okay, first of all. On a daily basis, and I'm the, the estate project force IC. So my job is to make sure people graduate the EPF and become good standing Sea Org members. Suck it up. Suck it up. Make you sure got this. Make sure to shame them for any complaints they might have yeah, about the abuses. Dude, that, oh, you, you hate running. Oh, it's starting to hurt. Oh, you vomited. Yeah, that's your body's way of saying push harder. Push harder. Um, you're not, you're not no, OT like, enough. Just, just operate, Thetan. Um, <laughs> no, what was the what was that woman? There was a woman, a, a redheaded woman, who was like probably in her forties when I was a teenager, who to my mind kind of ran that place. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Red hair. There, well, I know Renee see, Duzak had like brownish red hair. Say the name Renee Duzak. Renee Duzak. She used to also mm. work at AOLA. She was the LRH Com CC Network. Um, no. Where's my, Nora? Is Nora, is Nora, Nora would alive? know. Nora would know. Nora would definitely know who I'm talking about. She was a real character. Okay. And we're, um, it doesn't look it. like Nora's. Oh wait, no, maybe she's still alive. I'm so. I hope she's still alive. No, live. She. she I was went still to alive. Wait a minute. She better be. <laughs> I was like, like whoa, that escalated quickly. She's still alive, I think. We went from is she yes. on the tap live and alive. alive, live and alive. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. Hold on. There's there's a way that we can do this because I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it funny. Hold on. Where did it go? Way back in the day, the lesbian giveaway was the mullet. That See, used to yeah. Be, that used to be. I match. I always thought the lesbian giveaway was tucking in the the shirt to the pants. It's the spitting, maybe. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was a total uh, what they would consider a tomboy growing up. Yeah. Okay, you hold on. Pay me to put me in a dress. I don't know why, but somebody here has posted uh, just Bonnie Ray. Still there, Ray Midoff, Bonnie, Hold on, I love. it's not letting me pause. Hold on, people. Sorry, I'm hitting you with with everything. It's not letting me pause. Um, because I, because she's going, she's going amazing. Like, so What's we go happening? here, and we do it. Nope. Hold on, Mandy. Let me let me know if I do it right. Okay. And then. Oh, hey, um, there she is. Hold on. And here we've got. Oh, she's doing this. Here's, Here's the evidence, the evidence of so-and-so -so 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 doing it. He probably has pictures. Has uh -oh. Does he have pictures? Because, because when, when you, you do, do a, 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 you know, an, an operation. operation. You take pictures. Sorry. Yeah, luckily Scientology keeps meticulous records, just like the Nazis. Right? <laughs> yes, like, because like a meticulous record of their crimes. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that is that is, you know, my favorite Bonnie Ray did write some wonderful songs. Sorry. Uh, Somebody's just commenting about Bonnie Ray over here, and I'm getting distracted. Right. <laughs> Let's get, who is it? Wasn't it Bonnie Ray? Let's give them something to talk, talk about. about mm -hmm. a little, but she didn't write that. Actually, her a biggest little hit, <laughs> she didn't write something to talk yeah. about. And uh, the other song I really love of hers is uh, is a John Prine song called uh, Angel from Montgomery. Oh, okay. yeah, I know that song. Uh, my, my chick is uh, um, Linda Perry. 
Hey, hey, hey. I've been watching yeah, her she's... wife on the Connors. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> yeah. Linda Perry, yeah. yeah. She's an uh -huh. idol. Absolutely. She's a legend. No, did we know that Darlene would marry? Right, a foreign blonde. Yeah. <laughs> Darlene. And I don't know if you know this, Liz, but she uh, has written a lot of hits. Like she wrote yeah. hits for Pink. Well, Pink, the Pink for record is, is incredible. Britney Spears for yeah, like, they're, they're I mean, that's how a lot was. of those. And she Talk she wrote, too. I'm beautiful, no matter what you say, mm -hmm. words can She wrote the party song. Um, um, she wrote some of the best hits of the 90s. Her, there's a, a guy called Max Martin. He's a Swedish guy. And he yep. wrote, hit me, baby, one more time. He hit me. He, I he mean, wrote, he's a legend in the yeah, music yeah, yeah. industry. Yeah. 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 Like people like that to me are fascinating. The guy who wrote Wrecking Ball, <laughs> he's wrote a couple of other big, big hits that are famous. That are with those guys are those people are very interesting to me because nobody really knows who they are, but they're important, mm -hmm. they're instrumental. Yeah, followers. their songs have have touched thousands and millions. And, and I think there's something to an artist being matched with a song as opposed to singer-songwriters who I always loved. And when I was a kid, I just like thought that's all that mattered was singer-songwriters. But I've come to really appreciate how like what it means when Whitney Houston sings a Dolly Parton song, you know, and how that bringing those things together is that what then makes the whole thing so much greater than the, you know, some of the parts as it were. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cause I will always love you. Yeah. I will always love you. Cause <laughs> you know, just like <laughs> Bette Midler said, you, you're the wind beneath my wings. Well, she did say it, but she didn't write it. So that's the point, right? True. Um, no, who was it? Joni Mitchell said this about songwriting, that the goal should be not hits, but standards. That's the word she used. The idea should be to write standards. And certainly if you think of a song like River or um, California or something, those songs are definitely headed that way. But like something to talk about as a standard, like these are the contemporary standards. The old standards are Don't Get Around Much Anymore and those sort of old jazz, Cole Porter jazz songs, Nack and Cole stuff. And now the new standards are what? Like, like Layla or something. Like the but the, the songs that but it's the songs that get covered. That's the point. The standards are the songs that people used to sit around their pianos and sing together as families before so there was radio. One of the other greater great songwriters that um people in modern times forget about is what's her face? Uh Carol King. Is no, that... tapestry, yeah, Carol King. Yeah. So like, far away. Doesn't anybody stay in one She's place just like anymore. another, like just a standard legend in the industry, just like a working and she come, musician. And she comes out of an old school kind of working class mode of songwriting, mm -hmm. a Tim Pan Alley thing, where they like went to work, like a nine to five job and sat in a room and just banged out songs yep. all day, <laughs> which appeals to me, but <laughs> I don't think that exists anymore. True, true. Uh, but the Tapestry record is one of those records, like Joni Mitchell's Blue, like Pink Floyd's The um, uh, Not the Necessarily The Wall. Not Necessarily The Wall, I mean the other one, uh, the Prism one, but I can't remember what it's called. Uh, Dark Side of the Moon. Nirvana. These, records, oh, yeah, these, Dark these Side. records that keep getting rediscovered every generation, everybody, you know, they come back to them, come back to them. Those records are still charting. They still. Kate Bush got a, a second lift. From what? From Stranger Things. They oh, put, running up the hill. Yeah, they put running up a hill, and that's that, and that like resurged her. It is, yeah, fascinating to me how much of a thing that song still is. But yeah, it's interesting to me songs that like because generationally, so often those songs that are those songs for those moments get replaced, right? Somebody writes a new song, and now we have another moody song for this. But then there's some songs that don't get replaced, and they just keep coming back because they're so good. Like Mazzy, I'm hoping about, for like, another editing. Wait, wait, I didn't hear both of you. Oh, no, no, just what is that? Somebody take a turn. Oh. Liz, <laughs> Mandy. <laughs> I was just gonna say that's how I feel about Joy Division because, like, oh, wow, yeah, they're so like they're you know they're never gonna come back, but oh, some of those hits still get picked for movies, modern oh, yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that's uh, what's always interesting is when you hear those old songs, the funny old songs that people pull back up. There's another example of a song that was greater when covered was the song from Donnie Darko, the Tears for Fears song. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Mad Mad World. Oh, the the original version of that song is, is kind of corny. It's kind of a corny kind of uh, yeah. I I love you know, Mad World. It's not a great it's not a great version of that song, but the the version on that soundtrack just knocked us all off our feet. Really, you could just like that. I like the the um, version that uh, Joan Jett does of Crimson Water versus the other one. I don't think I know Crimson Water. Yes, stop. Um, 
Wow. Joan, Joan Jett is uh, the... Uh, crimson and not crimson and water, crimson and clover. That's what it is. Oh, crimson, uh, crimson and, and clover. clover. Because she, bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Cause she no. wrote that about um, a, a lesbian relationship. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Crimson and clover. It's cute. Um, well, she's more famous for I Love Rock and Roll, mm -hmm. which was written by a guy called Al Merrill. Merrill from a band called, I think, no, Aces was it called? I forget. But I knew that guy, the guy who wrote that song. Oh, cool here in new york and he played in a showcase that a friend of mine produced um, we just need to get you to california to get you on a showcase here and then we're just going to put you on tour and be like look amazing. just put me on tour i don't know how to do anything you know that's what sucks it's like yeah maybe i might have something here to offer but i don't know how to do anything i remember people talking about going on tour and i was like what by my what am i how do i, I don't even know how to get um i don't even know how to get downtown how am i supposed to go on tour <laughs> You just have to start calling up venues and booking yourself. No, I did. You know, that's what sucks. <laughs> I went through like a couple of, of, of these sort of periods. I even played a showcase of Lady Gaga right before she hit. And, you know, you do it and you do it. And you think what's going to happen, something's going to happen and nothing happens. You end up living in a park. And then what happens? The Anthony, Op Opie and Anthony thing happens. Like, something completely unexpected out of left field. Um and then after that, I did the same thing. I did shows. I booked shows. There were gigs and nobody came. One guy, one guy. I would, I would always come. It's a weird thing because when you're on the internet, dirty, like, but every, yes, the, you know the I mean. audience is so kind of dispersed. It's not necessarily a local, like there's not the, I don't have a local fan base. So there wasn't mm. like nobody, there were, I mean, there were people that could have come to these shows, but nobody did. So, or one, there was one guy, one guy. One guy came to all three, <laughs> came to like three different shows. And then there was one dude who did drive up from somewhere like Tennessee or something, but he like sat in the bar and didn't even come into the venue. So I don't know what that was all about. So yeah, um, being almost as famous as Grumpy Cat <laughs> is lots of fun. <laughs> That was I the met joke. Grumpy Cat before she died. Uh, there was she was a, a headliner at South by Southwest when the year that I was invited. I went to South by Southwest 2013, and Grumpy Cat was like I kept. We kept joking about how the, the, the my comp my competition was Grumpy Cat. <laughs> Who was the yeah. Um, but, Stasia, you know, I don't think Tom Petty oh, got Lucinda, the recognition he deserves. Lucinda Williams. Yeah, Tom Petty is definitely underrated, but in a good way. Like Tom Petty kind of like did kind of sit back and like he was never trying to be number one. He was just trying to make good, good jams. You know what I mean? Like there was always seemed to be an emphasis on just like having a good time, not necessarily. Or talking. your last dance. Well, that was that was the, probably the biggest hit he ever had. Last dance I loved that jam. And that was later. That was like after all. The music days. video scared the shit out of me, but. The, the Kim Kim Bassinger? Dancing around like she's a dead person. Like, oh. Last dance with Mary Jane. Oh, One I can probably freak you out with some music videos I've seen. Yeah, there's some good goth stuff. Apex Twin. Really freak you out. Yeah, right. Apex Twin. There you go. Come some to freaky daddy. Shit. <laughs> some freaky shit. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking, or Tool. Remember those old Tool videos? Oh, yeah. I am the, not the, the video liar. for Schism is insane. <sighs> oh, Schism. But it's, it's all like um, stop motion animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So were the other. Yeah, so were the, the sober video. There was like three more. Uh, Prison Sex, um, Swamp. They were great. Keenan, Keener, something. May, uh, yeah. Maynard. 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 <laughs> he's got three names and they're all, and I forget which order they go in. Um, but yeah, that guy, he's awesome. He's a crazy bad genius. And I've listened yeah. to like, oh God, a little bit of everything. The only things that I really can't stand is modern country and acid jazz. Well, as I understand, modern country <laughs> has just gotten really pop is the complaint. Yeah, it sounds more poppy. It sounds right. like I'm, I'm listening to... You know, yeah, that's what Shania, Shania like, Twain is blamed. Yeah, but it also <laughs> came from like working class people, whereas now they're not really working class people anymore. Yeah, well, but, that's one of the things I always think is funny about country songs. Everyone saw Catch a Lyric about like the barbecue stand on my white t shirt. I don't know if anybody knows what song I'm talking yeah. about, but that's Barbecue's what dead on the white t shirt. <laughs> right. she and was so it was in an ad mean. or something. So I would just hear that line over and over again. It's like that feels like such a not a put on, but like, 
oh, we're trying so hard to be to be working class. Oh, aren't we trying so hard? When I know the guy singing that song is a multimillionaire. You know what I mean? And even though I'm sure he has barbecues in his backyard and gets barbecue stains on his white T-shirts, he's not this like he's not some working class schlub anymore. You know what I mean? And I just wonder why. But they, but they, but that's the kind of that's the the audience. That's the medium. That's the that's the the narrative that they that they mm -hmm. um, the audience they provide for, as it were. So they got to keep being all like working class even when they're not. Hip hop has the same problem. You got to be from the streets, but then you become a billionaire and you're not really from the streets no more. You can't really wrap mm -hmm. up being from the streets no more. Same thing. Yeah, because I think people See, had like an issue with Eminem when he first came out, but then they realized, oh, he did come from the streets. He knows what he's talking about. And then they gave him a pass. <laughs> well, yeah, he's trailer park guy, right? So he has because he was also poor. So that's OK. You know, the same is true for Elvis. Elvis was also poor and grew up in the mm -hmm. back, you know, in the backwoods of Mississippi and shit. You know, he didn't he didn't just hear that music somewhere and try to steal it. He grew up listening to it, too. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I will I will say that it's like my grandma was a huge fan of Elvis, like <laughs> grandma's everywhere. <laughs> you know, she was all about the don't step on my blue suede shoes. And I'm like, grandma, that's off key. Uh, yeah, that's right. off key in it. Like you're going like this. I like singing off key sometimes. Um, um, but yeah, at the I same time, really, she loved him. Yeah, she, I never really had a, I never really appreciated Elvis until like maybe like just a few years ago. And it's really, you got to see the comeback special to really get a sense of what he is as an artist. Because the, the early stuff doesn't, I don't think showcase who he is. It's, it's, a, it's all about the, you know, sexiness or whatever it was of him. And he yeah, was the sway of the hips. Like, oh my God, people were so freaked out. Can you imagine how repressed a culture that that's what did it? Just yeah, some guys. It's, it's it. The guy gyrating is the one that causes and then, the. And then jump forward to like Tom Jones or Robert Plant with their like dicks out and like, and they're, you know, like throwing panties on stages. Oh, how far we've come. And now yeah. I know. Now there's purity rings. So yes. I guess we've come there, around. There is that. Um, oh, hell no. Actually, Tim McGraw grew up really poor in Louisiana. He His dad refused to accept responsibility of him. Um, Till the name Tug was willing to say he was his father. Yeah, I, I remember hearing the story all about him. Like he knew that Tug was his father, but Tug would not take responsibility. And then all of a sudden they met when he was in high school. And he's like, oh, shit, you are my son. Huh. Etta James just kidding for treating you like garbage. Right. Just kidding. Etta James has a similar story where her father was somebody famous, but he was white. And so he completely denied her completely. <laughs> I, I Same as the Harvey. old me. Hey, that's me. Somebody's quoting me now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Tug was a baseball player. Yeah. Yep. He was a baseball player. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Dennis. But... You know, I think it's I think what people seem to forget is that, you know, when you grow up, how a lot of us grew up, no matter what religion or cult you grew up in um, or snake oil you fell for, we all f we all found some kind of outlet. Daniel just happened to be like so musically inclined that it was just like m magic for me. I was sports. I I could put my anger and everything that I'd been through through a sport. Well, then my body said, fuck you, bitch. I'm going to watch your, your knee. Yeah, you like right, it? You right. like your knee? Watch. I'm going to go. I didn't even play sports and I broke my knee. So. Yeah. <laughs> Take like care I've had knee. so many You'll knee surgeries. The doctor's gone. just like, oh, I'm yeah. shocked it's hanging on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Bodies. Oh, bodies. Oh, what a pain. Yeah, it's it's not just that we're a little uh, uh what is it a, an adult in a baby body we're now adults in adult bodies yeah just saying it's strange old people bodies yeah it, it now feels old you know i'm painting a room right now as everybody knows and as i'm painting this room to get it ready for my for my mother um i'm sitting there like i i i'm on the ground painting and i'll go, i'll stand up and i'll go <laughs> and i'm like oh yeah <laughs> that yep, doesn't sound so sexy. Yeah, right. Oh, the, the noises. Oh, yeah, I make all these old man grunty noises, and the dog has started to mimic them. She makes these little mm, mm, noises now that she didn't used to make. <laughs> You're like, mm. <laughs> because I'm all uh, every time I get up there. <laughs> <coughs> 
Hey, I definitely understand that one. Definitely. Like there's times that Carrie will look at me and she's like, you're acting a little old. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> or even worse. She's like, when I'm, when I'm really hurting, she's like, you sound like your mom. And I'm like, Oh yeah. I hate sounding them, like them there's fighting words. Like that took it too far. <laughs> yeah. Like you went too far on that. But one. we, we mimic our abusers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, we do. Try not to. Try not to. Oh, try as hard as I do. Try as I might. I love this. I uh, I don't even get to the floor because it takes me an hour and a half to get back to my feet. Yeah, yeah. getting down. Or, getting or down I'm doing the... the yeah. Yeah, I got to put my hands you know. on something. Brace me like... Oh. Yeah, I gotta, I'm putting my... I'm putting what, like one hand on this knee, one hand on this knee, and I'm doing the... You will stand up. Yeah, and people don't understand because I walk on a cane, and people want to offer me seats sometimes. But it's easier for me to stand than to sit and have to get back up. The, getting back yeah. up is the hard part. Yes. Um, it's the hardest part. So it's easier sometimes if I'm only going one stop to just stand there. But people always want to offer you the seat, which is nice. But yeah. <laughs> it's hard to explain never, to people. <laughs> I don't want your seat. Yeah, I I was in a wheelchair for. Mm. Um, the first time I was in it was nine months. The second time was a year and a half. For what? For you? Um, they had to rebuild my knee. Oh, for your knee. Okay. Um, long- so I, I basic. So the last one, I had to fully learn how to walk again. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't. I couldn't move my leg. Like it was like. It, it's kind of like you're. You're like you're walking. Like it's not attached. Leg, you're like, I know. I see what you're talking about. Like it's not attached. Like the tendon. Yeah, and so you're sitting there dragging it. Like Ugh. this is a sexy walk. <laughs> And you're having to hold on to the bars because you know if you try to put weight down on that foot, you're going, woo just kidding, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like Monty Python Aurora. had the Ministry of Funny Walks. Aurora, Aurora. Lyrics, uh, lyrics don't forget who you are, even though you're in need. Like a bird in the night, your emotions deserve to be free. You can cry drinking your eyes. Do you miss the sadness when it's gone? When it's, yeah. I don't know what that's from. Aurora is amazing. She's an autistic um, little Swedish or Finnish elf-like creature that has the most amazing voice I've ever heard. The, the I was actually the- watching like a little documentary on her right before I came on here. <laughs> oh, Aurora, the blonde. Uh, yeah. The, the what's the what's the song? Uh, I want to say a conqueror, right? I'm yeah. looking for a conqueror. Yeah, she's tight. She's she's a uh, yeah. She is Norwegian. There we go. She is um a, yeah. Pixie is definitely the way to describe her. <laughs> and she does some cool covers. She did a cool, that's how I heard her first. She did a cover of somebody. I can't remember who though. Hey, uh, all I will tell you is that music. I have come to realize that music ha- has like a place in in everyone's recovery, and I didn't think it did. But I don't know. Music doesn't mean nothing to some people. Some people barely even hear music. It, yeah. I've realized that some people don't hear melody. Like it's, it's, do you know what I'm talking about? Like there are people mm-hmm. who don't hear melody. And so they don't understand melodic music. They hear sing, melodic singing and they go, oh, that's a good voice they're singing with, but they don't really get what it is that everybody else is hooking into. Mm-hmm. That's a weird thing to me. Um, a lot of the guitar players I, I've known, really good guitar players, but guys that can just like, r- you know, shred. They couldn't carry a tune to save their lives. Like totally yeah. toned off, no concept of melody at all. So what I do sounds totally redundant and dumb to them. <laughs> well, the one thing hey, I, all have, I know. I was Go just gonna ahead. say the the one thing that I have noticed in like the last, I don't know, decade or two is our ears are now tuned to stuff that comes off of the voice and American Idol and stuff like that. They want, and everything is so like perfectly tuned in production yeah. that when anything is sound sounds live and one note is off, people are like, oh, they suck. And I'm like, no, you're just used to hearing like pitch perfect. Like someone is overly produced in and like yeah. making an auto tune. There's this, there's this yeah. bane of this auto tune thing where you can put somebody can go in there and sing an entire thing off key and they can go in with a computer and fix it and make it sound like that. It doesn't sound quite as good. No, you it, still it never sounds right. It sounds auto tuned. It sounds wrong to anyone who's listening, but yeah. to people who aren't really listening to the people who it's just noise in the background or music at a club or something. It doesn't matter. 
Hey, I, you know, to a lot of people, you know, as much as we're all talking about how much music means to us, there are people that to music. Doesn't I mean think music's much. shit. Yeah. Or just like, it's just noise. It's just a thing you dance to, you know, those, the, it's just, it's got a nice mm-hmm. beat. I can tap my foot to it. That's all that matters. Whatever else is going on is not really. And then to some of us, it doesn't even matter the, the aesthetic of the song. We, we hook into the thing that the guy's ta- or the girl is talking about, the person's talking about. So like, there's these, it's a whole spectrum of how people even engage in music. Yeah, and I'm always looking for things that really make me uh, feel something. Um, well, I, I don't understand music that doesn't. I think all music is going to make you feel something, even if it's hatred. You know, that's one of the things about punk music that's very interesting is that it often the response as an audience member is hostility, is to mm-hmm. get mad. And so you have to like kind of work through your anger at this music to even learn to like it, to even learn to appreciate it, because it's coming at you with so much hostility. Especially back see, in the I, days when people used to spit at the you know spit at each other all the time. Or like, yeah, Crap. that's like a that's a punk thing. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about punk. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I love punk um, music. REM, but... U2, Indigo Girls, Replacements. Yeah. Lori, Replacements. absolutely. Indigo Girls, I haven't heard them in a long time. Or do you know LP? Do you know there's a singer called LP, Laura something? Do you have any idea who that is? She's a gender non-binary she's got a she looks like the dude she looks like the dude from the 1975 she looks like across from like mick jagger and okay i know who you're talking about yeah and she's awesome she, there's a voice i'm gonna have to look that up so that way i know so carrie carrie probably like her her selection of music is like it, it's gonna bounce all the way around every genre and then it's just whether or not she finds the music sexy well, that's okay. So, all right, she'll like, like LP. Your <laughs> music is very sexy. Be like, okay. <laughs> or Dorian okay. Electra. I don't know if you've heard of Dorian Electra. Dorian, Dorian Electra is another like gender queer, gender bending yes. person. I, like I do the, know I like her. The tattoo of the ship. I like that. No, I'm just gonna do whatever. It's gender fluid. I like that. Seems more real to me. That seems more genuine. Mm-hmm. And the fact of the matter is, it to me, it all depends on who you're with. If that makes sense, you know, like it's how you relate to this person. There's people you want to fuck. There's people you want to get fucked by. There's, you know, there's all sorts of directions that you can kind of look at relationships and sex and sexuality, depending on who you're with. Yeah. When it comes to queer music for me, I think the one who really sticks with me is Peaches. Oh, yeah. Fuck the pain away. Yeah, she was huge when I first came to New York. She was all that her music was everywhere. Well, my my queen of the the the, the gay music is Ani D. Ani DeFranco. Oh yeah. Oh, I went to Lil Fair when in the nineties. That was fun. I didn't get to. Yeah, I, I've saw I've seen Ani live, but not Ani Lil DeFranco, Fair. Melissa Etheridge, Fiona Apple, uh, like Indigo Girls, <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah. Part of the Lil Fair. Tori Amos. Tori, who? Oh yes, Tori was a queen. Those are the th- those are the those are the big is Ani D, uh, Tori Bjork, Li- um, Liz Fair. Um, oh, I love Liz PJ Fair. Harvey. PJ Harvey. PJ Harvey is yes. probably like the yes. Best. And there's a couple more. Um, I don't know. There's a couple more. I but love PJ great- Harvey stuff that she does with um, Nick Cave. Yeah, she did a whole record with Nick Cave. I yeah. Think. Yeah, I know kind of older stuff, but she's genius. And again, yeah, because she's I a, talk she's about hard. music all day long. <laughs> but Tori, Tori lost me. Tori lost me when she started singing about butterflies. That chick used to sing about abortions. Now she's singing about butterflies. So I, can, I think I've lost my thread with Tori as much as I ever. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I can, I can see that. Uh, that was the '90s. Every female artist, there was at least one track on that record about her abortion. Fiona Apple had a had a song about her abortion on her first record on Title. Everybody was singing about their abortion. even Bill uh, Billy. Um, I was about to say Billy Eilish. Uh, Billy, it's, I don't think she's had one. Um, I doubt Britney it. Britney Spears. <laughs> that's what it was. Britney Spears. But she came out recently that one of her old songs was about her abortion. Wow. See. Ah. Uh, even. Wow. That clinches it right there. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Even Britney. Even Britney. Yeah. Well, Ani yep. is my Britney. So. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk. To <gasps> Katie Lang, oh, almost forgot. Yes. Oh, Katie, Katie Lang. Lang. There's a voice and a half. Yeah, constant yes. craving. 
Oh, yeah, I think all of our playlists are exhilarating. Like listening to you guys talk about music is, and looking at how bright like your faces get, it's <laughs> it's like it is. That's you know how that? I talk about sports. So yeah. for me, that's sports. Yeah, like, it's my Billie Eilish ukulele. Oh yeah, I need to get a ukulele. That's a good idea. It's amazing to me how much the ukulele has come back and become such a big part of popular music. Everybody has a ukulele version of something. On the, all, all the pop songs, there's some ukulele version somewhere. Billy Ice does a couple of good ones. Mm -hmm. The one about your birthday. Sorry, it's your birthday. Yep. I love that song. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys song go. Right now? Say what? Okay, you're gonna let us go. All right. I'm gonna let you go because I gotta finish my laundry. It never. It's never done. It's, it's never. never any, I have like it's never four forget about to do. <laughs> it's that's an inbox that's never empty. I'll talk to you later, Liz. It was good to meet you, Daniel. I nice hope to I meet talk you, to you again soon. We'll I'll talk out. to you. I'll talk to you later today, lady. She's already muted. So is Nora going to join us or no? She's still on her live. I We've checked been. out to see where she was, and she is still absolutely going on that live. So I don't foresee her being able to join us, which means that she's going to have to do this again. We're going to have to do this again. Well, I am supposed to do it all the time. I'm supposed to just do this all the time and get used to it. Just do it all the time. And I'm supposed to start my own channel and be some suck freaking oh, you, yappity, you yappity yap. Yappity yappity yap. Oh, I can yap so well. You can, but it, at the same time, it's not, you know, there's people that can talk and that sit there and talk and talk and talk and talk yeah. and you don't understand what really. they're saying, but you have a way of relating your experiences to what you want to go over yeah, and I that tend, makes it easy to understand. <laughs> I tend to have some fucking story attached to everything. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I, I am turning into one of those old guys full of stories. Oh, I guess Nora just finished. Someone just said Nora just finished. Nora just finished. That's that's personal, Peter. That sounds that's dirty. That sounds that sounds like a personal issue. <laughs> I'm like Nora's <laughs> wife would not want us to know this, <laughs> unless Nora's wife was who got her to finish. True, she might kill us for that statement. It all depends. Um, so what? Now people are tuning in. Now that Nora's done, look at that. We got we got totally like cock blocked by Nora. Well, it's because Nora was talking about um, Mike Rinder. So anytime you you're bringing up, all right. So should we talk about Mike Rinder? Sure. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I've never met the man. I think he's vile. I yeah. think See, it's hard for all of us. I think because we're we're going to be naturally biased because Mike because uh, Rinder was the boogeyman. But we, Rinder was mm -hmm. so much the fronting front facing guy who scared me anyway, and uh, younger people I'm sure even more so. Uh, David Miscavige isn't that intimidating, no matter how hard he tries. But that Rinder guy, he was scary. Yeah, I was not scared of of. Uh, uh, hold on, she's asking me to text her a link. Misca Mis Miscavige. I was not. I, I was never scared of Miscavige. Amy Scobie, on the other hand, like I thought that woman was going to rip, like reach into my heart or re reach into my chest and pull out my heart and step on it. And then when I when I talked to her over the phone for the first time, like since many many years had passed, mm -hmm. it was literally like this is oh. just cigarette, by the way. So I don't. I no, know I know. But do. I don't, it looked like when you when you light a, a little clip of a cigarette, it looks like something else sometimes. That's all. Oh, oh, I don't care if you even. I am four twenty friendly. If anybody has a problem with the fact that I am four twenty friendly, How, um, what a I don't know what are. to tell you because um, I'd rather I'd rather make sure that I'm on something that has grown from the ground than something that is made in a lab. I'd rather this than a pharmaceutical. It's funny. Again, I, I talk often about how like there were these hippie roots in the, in the early days of Scientology that all got kind of pushed out over the years. And uh, it's always seemed weird to me how, how anti-drug, anti-weed and stuff like that, that the church, was, that Scientology was because um, the hippies were all about it. But they didn't want you enlightening yourself in any other way. They wanted to presume that only Scientology could help you. Like you're not supposed to take LSD because that might actually le lead you to some higher consciousness they didn't want you to have. True. Very true. Okay. A weak little elf. And Rinder is a scary Santa. Yeah. You notice the Santa's the same letters as Satan. <laughs> It's impossible not to be 420 friendly in Colorado. Yes, I would imagine so. Yes, Jamie Mustard is my half brother. 
Jamie and Josh and I, we share a father. They have a different mother who is still very much engulfed in the craziness, uh, Rosalinda. Rosalinda and my mother are both representative of a generation of women who were a little older than the hippies who kind of like ditched their more comfortable lifestyles to go shack up with hippies in a sort of like, um, who was the, who was the woman, the, the heiress that got kidnapped, Patty Hearst. Oh, okay. like Patty Hearst, she got kidnapped by a bunch of revolutionaries and then she turned on the main, she turned on her own culture supposedly and, and sided with them. <laughs> and there were quite a lot of debutantes of the time who dropped out of their little socialite lives to go marry hippies. And my mother was one of them. And so was Jamie's mother in her way. Uh, my, those, wait, my, wait, it says here that they, somebody's insisting that Hubbard wasn't doing drugs, but I knew the doctor. I worked for doc, for, for L. Ron Hubbard's doctor. And I know that he was doing quite a lot of drugs. Yeah, he, he absolutely did. There's not, there is, unequivocal evidence besides just his death report. Like if you pull it, <laughs> wait, it his, says he was on everything but roller skates. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean the whole comment. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like there was there. And then he sat there and said, Oh, drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. Yeah. He was supposedly like, yeah, on speed all the time. Which yeah. he reads, he reads as a meth head. He reads like that. And that's the, the teeth and the way, like even that interview where he's like, He's doing this thing all the time with his teeth. That's like cokehead shit. God, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's shit. Yeah, yeah. He was mm -hmm. psycho. He was totally psycho. He was yeah. so psycho. It scares me now that I think about how much I admired this guy as a child, as a young person, just to realize how fucking psycho he is. And then here I am being, you know, I'm pretty psycho myself. Unfortunately, I kind of remind myself a little too much of the old man. No, do as not I say, all. not as I do. Look, the do as I say, not as I do, there's a really specific point to that, which is about the puppet master, the game master. He sets the rules, but is not obligated to follow them. You know, and but you play the game thinking that everybody's playing the same rules, but they're not. And that's part of the game, you know. Yeah. That's that is the hard part, is that a lot of times it's Hippies were very much early punks. They were, it was the tune out, drop out. It was the generation of people who realized that the world was just a big, fat, lying mess. You want the Ottoman back? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Are you on live? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh. she, she didn't realize that I was on live. No, my, my boyfriend has a tendency to do that. I will be like, he won't talk to me all day, and then I'll be on the phone. All of a sudden, he's got 100 things he's got to say. Yeah, she she's we're just trying to get the house in order. Like we're gonna be hanging our our TVs today. Went and got a router so that way the you know the far bedroom is gonna have cable and internet <laughs> access. Well, that's what's that's what matters. Because you know we without gotta make sure without internet access, you're not even human no more. Well, I. For me, it's it's particularly we upgraded our camera system. We already had like a decent one, but we upgraded it to a much better picture. So where you can actually, if anybody walks up to the house, like you're getting a full on, thanks for walking up to Candid Camera. Get some of those geese. The guard geese. The guard geese. <laughs> okay, hold, hold on. Nora like, Have you seen that clip? It's this goose, this woman, she's nursing a baby and there's like pet geese or something. And an eagle comes and tries to, take the goose and this woman runs out of her house it's, all of this is on a door uh, a door cam on a front door doorbell cam and she runs out of the house and chases the eagle off and saves the goose it oh. it's just one of these funny clips that goes around all right so Nora is saying that she wants a link sent her a link let's see i love that Nora is going to join us because Nora knows Nora knows everything she knows what was going on I want to know who it was. I wonder if she was in that room. Who was the, who, who, who were the, because it was all girls. It was all young girls, teenage girls. But who coerced me into that? Okay. So I just sent it to her. So now she's good. Um, um, hold on. I'm really, this one, do as I say, not as I do. That one got me a lot. Yeah. That one got me a lot as a kid. Yeah. Because, I, a, a person asked me, why did we, why did I respect L. Ron Hubbard so much as a kid? Because we were told that he was a war hero. We were told that he basically walked on water. Um, well, it's like, a Jesus, it's a Jesus myth. It's a, you know, anytime you have a, a, a you know, a, 
a supposed Messiah to elevate, you pretend that he's holy, righteous. You know, there's a whole thing about the compiling of the Bible. It's all the stories that make Jesus look holy or, or supernatural, but all the stories that make him look human, they edit those out. They cut those out. So that's all they want to tell you. I remember going to the, the L. Ron Hubbard Museum thing just on, on Hollywood Boulevard and just thinking, this is all just such bullshit. Just all <laughs> bullshit. Hey, Nora. Hi. Hi, what's up? <laughs> the shirt you're wearing, it's almost like it says the gay. It says the gay. The gay. <laughs> oh no, we're going to catch the gay. Uh -oh. That's what we're, I'm telling you. COVID I, when I, I got to make sure that I sneeze into my shirt so I don't spread the gay. I can't spread the gay. No, only certain people are elected to be part of the gay. <laughs> Right, we got to make it prestigious, but yeah, that's what the—that's right. what the conservatives are accusing us now of making it also hip. So everybody wants to be gay now, or queer, or trans. What I find fascinating are people who are gay people, but gayness has been so vilified to them that right. they opt for the trans identity because it's less—it's—it's it's a newer thing. So there's not as much shame attached to it. It's a whole—I mean, like, listen, at like everything, it evolves, and it's just—it's it, fascinating to me where like um all of that comes from too like it's just it, yeah i feel like it's you know it, it, there's so many labels now that i don't understand like my kids are explaining them to me can you guys hear me <laughs> yeah all the time um uh, that there i was just like i don't know what that is uh so like i have to like google things and figure <laughs> well, it out i like, and, like the notion of you know, non we were talking about this before i like the notion of gender nonconformity. i think that's probably more genuine a thing and particularly because i do think of myself and everyone is in a spiritual notion, you know, right. as a spiritual being. And I know that's a funny thing to say in the context of Scientology, but because that's where I get it from. But I've always thought that way and always believed that, that we are something beyond these bodies. And so the conversations about gender and race and all these kind of things just don't really make a whole lot of sense, really. Right. Because right? Yeah. the body is almost irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. No, I feel you on that. I mean, it's just, I, I think it's just more of it's more in the zeitgeist, like, cause you know, we're all oh, yeah. about the same age. And it's so like when we were growing up, there was no Ellen DeGeneres. There was no glee. There was no like modern you know what family. I, you know what I had when I was a kid? Stuff like my own private Idaho. Right. Like that yes. was a big deal. Indie yeah, film. My own private Idaho. film allowed mm -hmm. some queerness into, into your life under the guise of I'm into art films. Right. 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 <laughs> but, <laughs> But those Which were was, like, but... those were so, you know, niche. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. yes, the great yeah. River Phoenix and Keanu yeah. Reeves together. Yeah. I mean, just. Yeah. And I remember smile. showing that movie in particular to other Scientology boys right. who were, you know. Yeah, they're a little. Of, of questionable yeah. orientation. You had it. Did you like, did you like it? Did you like this movie? Was did it make you happy? <laughs> yeah, right. But so you could get, you could get away with appreciating um good art like that mm -hmm. and and those characters and those actors mm -hmm. because <clears throat> it never like revealed yourself too much like you know like when the Joan of Arc film came out right and Mia Jovovich was like playing Joan of Arc okay <laughs> I was like melting in I'm my sure. body because oh, she sure. was so hot oh, and all yeah. this stuff. but also they showed a tiny bit of like her queer arcness and then Dave Pettit who's like the most you know, closeted mofo and the whole planet was like, he's, he basically said to me, you're like her. And I was like, like me, what, like bitch? you hear voices in your head. Or like, right. <laughs> like, like, like talk to you. <laughs> Does God talk to you directly? Normally? Right. Well, probably, but um, you know, but like that I was like this rebel, but I think like what he was trying to say is like, he like, you know, Queer sees queer. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he he tracked me yeah. along with Renee Duzak, you know. I like, you know, I think I think that this yoga is just full of queer people hiding oh, out. Yes. You know, that's what it is. And that's what <laughs> the Catholic Church was for a lot of people for a long time. That's where queer people hung out or hide it, hid out rather, also historically. You know, these yeah. are this is where queer people go. We and hung then, out in the hallway in the Wilcox. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. I know the Hollywood. That's funny. All right. Um, no, but I'm, you know, I'm still, I still feel so, I'm still so pissed. I feel so, still feel so damaged by it. This, uh, this, this bigotry that doesn't even belong, I think, in a, in a theology that's supposed to be relating to you as a spiritual being. Yeah. 
It doesn't even belong there. And Kate Borenstein, if you know who she is, she's a trans She's amazing. Woman. Right. So I read her book because of the tagline, the incredible true story of a nice Jewish boy joined the Church of Scientology and then left to become a nice Jewish girl. Yeah. And that was it. I was standing in the library going, Scientology. Okay, God. You know, I had to read that, right? Yeah. And that was what draw, drew her in, was that it talked to you on a spiritual level. It wasn't yeah. about you being a man or a woman or anything like that. It was about you being a, an operator, a, a, a spiritual being. I won't even use the word, the T word. Um, <laughs> um, all of a sudden, then, I'm all transsexual, transvestite. No, 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 no. no. Uh, the T word. The, that's why, the, that's why the, Aaron the always word. says, not today, Phaeton. Not today, Phaeton. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Not to do right? Not to do that's hilarious. Oh, that's okay. good. Love them. Pamela, Love them. I'm going to honestly say, why can't we just treat humans as humans? That would be a lovely, amazing thing. Honestly, we I were think. Not brought we, up like that. Yeah, I think we deserve. I think treating. That's the problem is we treat humans like humans and we don't treat humans very well. Yeah, no, 100%. You know what we should do is treat, treat everybody like a pet, like our dog. You know what I mean? Like it's the one thing we can do really well as people is be good to our pets. There's something we do well, but we're not very good to each other. So he was originally talking about someone at Celebrity Center that had red oh, hair. And a there was head. right. There was a woman uh, who kind of, in my mind, when I was a teenager, kind of ran Celebrity Center. She seemed to be the 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 the, the large large in charge. Red hair. She had to pick it at some point, but for a long time, she really had more of the sort of Dorothy Hamill kind of thing. But See, and that sounds Renee do that sounds like do that. No, because Renee is very tall and willowy, and she had black hair. Yeah, no. And if you're talking about the woman who had like the bob haircut and then it went short, he's talking. Uh, Daniel's talking about the um, president. No, no, no. She was the DCO for something. She was foreign. She had like a Spanish accent. Or... No, no, no. She was a white American woman. She was We're not. About no, white she American was an American woman. woman. She's a little heavy set. She looked a lot like the woman who plays Nora. Nora, uh, what's her name? Um, on Girls, the mother on Girls. Um, was it the vice president then? Because Maybe. she I don't was know. always around. I don't really know. You know, I wasn't. You know, I was. Because I know she, though. in the president's office, there was a woman with that had red hair. And president's office the, sounds right to me. That yeah, that was right. the vice president, and she was mm. out and about all the time. But she was right. German. See, I don't know. Maybe I. No, she didn't have an accent. The woman was talking. But about. how old was she? Was she an older woman? Like, yeah, older she was in her forties when I was right. twenty. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Um, um, this is my my puppy is is invading now. She doesn't she doesn't like being oh, left out. No, Hello, Raven. You, they can't be. She's my a beauty. Is, she's a beauty yeah, queen. You sleeping. see her. Um, <laughs> she is all up in my face now. You gotta stay. Um, and then did you know my dad when he was the manager of the Manor Hotel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he used How, to play the piano in the lobby yes, all the time. Yes, he did. That's what he was known for. It was weird at a certain point. I made some friends with some girls who were people who ran away. You probably knew them. Um, I, 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 I hid some of them. <laughs> I hid Good. some of those girls on their way out. Good job. Um, uh, sh I don't know. Um, and, and yeah, and they all knew him. They, some of those girls worked directly under him and it was just kind of a, the closest I ever felt to him was learning about him through them. Yeah. Like that. That's how I feel close to my dad is yeah. hearing stories from people that hung out with my dad. Like Sterling was like, no, your dad was the funny guy. Like nobody could hate him. Mike Brown, your dad was the funny guy. Nobody could hate him. <laughs> like that's kind of me. That's me. Like, right. I'm, yeah, I'm they the like funny person dad. that nobody wants to hate because I, I, just I don't think I ever dad. saw your dad honest. I mean, maybe one time at like a staff meeting, get cranky. Yeah, but like for the most part, he was a big jolly guy who was just like huggy and like jovial. And what makes me look back on those times with sadness is like the affection and things that he would give to people like me, right? That I was just literally like a rando in his yeah. life because I had joined the sea org. I wasn't even in the same org as him. Mm -hmm. um, he was not giving to you and the rest of your family. And that as a parent, like breaks my, it just breaks me because like, it was something that I never, um, <laughs> uh, that I never thought about at the time. 
like, you know, I was a teenager in the Sea Org. And we were 18, all taught 19. to think that these things right. didn't matter that it, much. It was the none of that. All that was normal. Important. Like, oh, your dad's a, in the Sea Org and you're right. not. And like, or just you the, or that, that idea that your kid wasn't really even your kid. This is just a, a, a spiritual being passing through and you're here to take care of it so it can take care of itself. No, it's um, just insane. It's just like, I don't. Thinking back on all that now and seeing like my remembering like the cadet org kids coming through and doing projects at Celebrity Center to like clean up the files or like clean the grounds or things like that. And the way that we talked about the cadets and the people supposedly taking care of them and stuff and everybody was just gross. Oh, they're filthy. And like all these, like it, the question never came into my mind. Like, why even these kids had a bath? Why? Why, why is why no one like Perhaps, teaching them how to put on deodorant? Because they're responsible. Because no you're them? responsible for your own condition already right. at eight years old. You got to get your shit together. If you don't, that's your problem, right? That's yeah. part. Of, that's you know, that's the big abuse. No, um, it's, it's insane. Yeah, and Jamie and my sisters kind of suffered through that, but Jamie really, like, Jamie's still mad. He's still so. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he's working through it and I'm proud of him for, you know, all the work he's been doing. And, you know, like he, like you, you guys were never like, okay, we're going to drop a bomb with our story because you got your entire story, your, your family's story is enormous, right? You think it's just one in like a million, but it is, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. And it, it, it is woven through you know, a, a lot of heartbreak and everything else. But it, it, the fact that you were just living across the street in the Shangri Lodge for all those years, and your father's literally 25 feet from you. And constantly doing and, business with CC, not for nothing. Right. We were constantly renting out rooms and doing oh, stuff. Yeah. And all sorts you of guys stuff were, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, without the Shangri Lodge. So it's, not, it's not like we were just some off some big, we were inter interacting. <laughs> it wasn't right. like, yeah. <laughs> it was symbiotic in some ways, but like, and, let's be honest, you weren't like, you know, raking and I in would, because they yeah. screwed you guys on prices and everything else too. Yeah. It was like, always about the break. That's the only yeah. reason. Yeah. Mom was always oh, yeah. giving them breaks and stuff. Um, and they used to do weird things in our apartments. I'll tell you. Um, oh yeah. There was a whole like, I don't even know what, what to call it, but like a Ninja woman, so, like somebody's having journal like, power. Right. Liz, Liz, we can hear the Ninja Turtles. You can hear the Ninja Turtles. Yes. It's not me singing. It's it's Carrie. It's Carrie, but you should. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Daniel. I'm sorry. Um, that wasn't just no, a there random. Was the, ninja they did this a few in. times, but there was a, one in particular. Where was a woman who was supposedly having a psychotic break. All she wanted was to get the fuck out of there. And right. so they were like, no, you can't go. And so eventually she starts throwing a fit as a human does when it's contained and trapped and they call her psychotic. So they lock her up in one of our apartments and they're yeah. running supposed processes on her and all this stuff. And it was nuts. Like it was so clearly something wrong with this. And I was barely even let a, allowed in the apartment. I just showed them to the apartment. Um, no, there's just whatever. It's the it's the it's a torture chamber. <laughs> it's a dungeon. It's a dungeon. And some people were, grew up in the dungeon. And for me, I was the dungeon was my playground. I went to the dungeon to go play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we all I think we all did that. And and also just a a, a shout out to the uncreative uh, Sir Burger Planet Geezer who thinks that they are super clever here in the chat spelling the f word out in individual letters over many chats, not oh. creative, not fun, Glasgow, just oh. stupid. No okay? swearing. Because guess what? We're all gay and we own it. So, uh Oh, Oh no, that word doesn't bother us. So also just dumb. Like if you're going to be in third grade, you can go. Was somebody being homophobic? Oh yeah. Yeah. They, used, that. they, used, the, they spelled the, the F bad word. gay word, the bad F gay word, which oh. some, gay men, some gay men are like, they call each other that and they call you mean the cigarettes. Like, Yes, the <laughs> British cigarettes. Yes. Well, yes. you know that story. You know where that comes from. Why faggots? No, why faggots? Go for it. Um, back in the day when they used to burn witches on it, like ladies like you, they yes. tie you up to a stake and set you afire. <laughs> the faggots were the homosexual men were so lowly that they were just thrown onto the fire with the other bundles of sticks, which is what a faggot is. It's a bundle of sticks you use to set a fire. Wow. <laughs> and that's why faggots and cigarettes are called that. Because they're both okay. <laughs> women were so powerful, we had to be tied down and like you know, which is men. Like, the me, the men of there the time go. were scared of the witches being the well, smart, yeah. independent women. 
They were terrified of women who knew what the fuck they were talking about because they knew that women were going to unravel all the lies and all the stupid stories they tell each other. I love it. I love, I've never heard the origin of that word other than, you know, like that, but that makes sense. But that's why the cigarette is also, that word is used there Who set fire to their house? Look at this. We're being sabotaged. Okay. Hang on one second. Osa. Osa setting off fire alarms. Okay. (laughs) Even better. (laughs) I'll remove her for right now. She's still here, everybody. I didn't delete her, but that way we're not hearing the beep, beep, beep. Yeah. That is hilarious. That is, I don't even have a good comeback to that, actually. Where the kid trying to cook or the yeah, because I've set fire to a house before. That was amazing. Like, um, I had some relatives <laughs> come over to my apartment when I lived in San Jose. And that was the only way you get rid of them. At, no, but, uh, um, <laughs> so they were they were like, you know what, you've done all the cooking. Why don't we do the cleaning? Okay, wow. So now it's Andrew Star. Wow, you're just so original today. What's happening? Now, really, this is they're really doing this. Why? Yeah. I mean, who are they? What I don't understand is why would you come to somebody else's channel to be a dick? Um, I don't reason? if mods can get rid of that. I it's ah. not on my channel at Andrew Starr. Who hurt you? Who hurt you? Right? It's okay if you're gay, you don't have to be mad at us because we're is out. he related to Ringo Starr? Because that's pretty I don't good. know. Like, I'm just saying, like, it's... Well, yeah, that's the old joke of the trolls. They have no life. They have nothing interesting to look at or do. So they bother themselves by bothering other people. Yeah, you're, like, super... Oh, uh, they're saying he's gone. Thank you so very much, everybody um, that took care of it. Um, Sisu, the most important Finnish word to know, Sisu. The only thing I know about Finland is the Monty Python song. (laughs) Finland, Finland, Finland. I know Renee. <laughs> I think I know who that is. <laughs> nice. Um, but it, I, I will say, you know, coming out as, as gay for us was not very easy. I had to move across the country. I would. So the way that I would tell people oh. I was gay, I was like, yeah, he's not cute. He's, he's not my cup of tea. Right. He's not my type. <laughs> Sometimes I worry that the whole, only reason I like want to be an artist in the first place is because it was the out. He's not gay. He's an artist. You know what I mean? Like that's sort of like, so like that was okay. It was okay to be gay if you were an artist or gay-ish or something, right? Yeah. So that's why I need to be an artist just to justify my gayness. Is that why I like Pokemon? Because I need to justify my gayness. Like I just have. I don't know. You just want to. You just want to poke a man. Uh, I want to poke a (laughs) man. Right. (laughs) Oh my goodness! That was just my teen trying to cook, and they did things in the wrong order. Oh, don't they? The house didn't burn down. Well, that's no, they good. just turned the pan on, on and then it, the, oh, look at my hair sticking up. Um, the pan got too hot. And then we have these really, we have a brand new house, that, you know, from like a couple of years ago. So there's like sensors in each quadrant. And if like the heat gets too hot or if there's like a, a, a like, you know, smoke from a pan, that that's what you hear. Fire fire. And then each area has its own individual sprinkler. Like if that had gotten hot enough, the sprinkler would have turned on over his head to put out the fire. So I had to jump into action. And then I get an alert from my home pod, which is in the same room. That's like danger something. Your house is on fire. I'm like, Bitch, I'm in the house. <laughs> that's I'm like, good. that's like when I try to log into an email account and they like want me to go through 12 different security steps. It's too much. It's over secure. I think it's interesting. Now they found that talking fire alarms are more effective in getting people to move or waking up, wake up. A voice saying "wake up" works better than an alarm. Right, uh, Renee, catching up with mustard. That's right. That's you know what, what I'm going to call my channel. Catch up with mustard. They, that's what you should call Isn't it. Isn't that hilarious? Oh my god! That's no, that's brilliant. my that's my thing. That's my friend Renee. She's she's blowing my wad. Right, she's blowing up my spot right now. Uh, she's love like, it. you will love him. Renee, love Renee him. was also <clears throat> raised in Scientology. Oh, okay. Her, oh, okay. Her, her parents were Sea Org. Nice. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing is that, you know, nice. and I said it before is that the um, the most powerful, thank you, Toby, the dogs now, the most powerful thing that 
I think we've done protest wise has been the list that Liz Gale created and getting to carry that around CC. Wait, what's the um, list? I don't know the list. So, so Liz, Liz, Liz made a list. It had 142 names on it at the time of born ins, second gens, third gens, people that have left. Uh, and then at the bottom of the list uh, were also people who were born in who are no longer with us. Mm -hmm. um, and we, and the list was like 75 feet long and a group of us, what's up? We said your name, Liz. And there she is. Holla. Holla. Um, <clears throat> and then we carried the list as a group um, around Celebrity Center while like telling them about it and said the names. And now I think, I th in, correct me if I'm wrong, Liz Gale, like about 60 to 80 other people have contacted her and been like, I want my name on, put me on, on the list. list. Am I on the and list? I, I, <laughs> yes, I believe so. I believe you're on there. But, but yeah, Liz I, wanted I to make sure you. that the people she had put on were A, like consenting to it. Um, and because, you know, we've all known people who are out and they're out, out, they're not doing Scientology. They're not with it, but because of other connections, they're not talking about it. Yeah. 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 I know a lot of right. people that are out and just don't want to even talk about it. Anymore. Oh yeah. They, they manage to get themselves off the mailing list and they're done. They want nothing more to do. How? Like I literally. <laughs> you got to move addresses a lot. It helps if you move out of country or out of state. I had to move I've across done that. the country. I moved out of country and you know yeah. what happened because I kept my PO box. It still kept coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So They'll I've even you. written on it. I've this is the rainbows. one thing they do the best. Yeah, I keep rainbows. following you. I am. I am the gay. I, um, yeah. my name I'm, is Lick a lot of puss. Lick a lot. Um, <laughs> to create, I, to I, to the I, I masturbate. Like I've tried like all of it, like Ooh. every list I would put on there. I'd be like masturbation so is my favorite today. thing to do. Yeah. I'm an alcoholic, an list. addict. I'm famous for being homeless. I'm a bum. <laughs> I'm, I'm the most degraded being on the planet. Like, and, and yeah. I just all of the things of they stuff. said were going to happen to us. If, if we left Dan happened to you, Danny. Well, I like, left, so yeah. I guess they were. Yeah, I flipped burgers. I, I was told it. I'd be lucky to flip burgers, and you know what? That was the yeah. best job ever. I right know. after this New York. What's wrong with flipping burgers, everybody? What's the matter with you? Like, uh, first we're, of all, we're what, people why eat. do they hate burgers so much? It, that's it's again, it's one of these old school boomer concepts that that flipping burgers at a at a at a at a hamburger stand is some summer job that every every person of that generation had. So they keep relating right. that as, but they don't. But people don't realize that food service is like the number one industry in the country now. It's not. It's, it's not just how, a part time job. Oh, did you want your DoorDash, everyone? That you got to thank a burger flipper, like yeah, right. right? Yeah, right. See there, that annoys me. That annoys me that that's the only, you know, the capitalistic notion of America is to say that, ca that co competition breeds innovation and the only innovation we can come up with is more convenience. Thank you. That's Thank it. You. That's as innovative Boom. as we've been. In, like, Mic what? drop. Yeah, since, pretty much. Since polio. When was the last time we actually invented something or did something good for the world? I don't know. Um, well, the iPhone's pretty great. But. Yeah, we didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, none of us did that. Like who we, did that? We, that Bill we Gates definitely were, oh, we're definitely Jobs. the tester, the tester children of all you know anti uh, anxiety and and the, medications. Wait, what? Our generation, I, the Prozac. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, my, they tried to put me on that stuff. My mother went to court. She fought it. Ooh. I wish. I think I, I wonder sometimes. What if I'd been medicated? Maybe I'd be better off. Yeah. You know, I wish child services had taken me away, but of course nobody was going to call child services. Oh my yeah, God. nobody called. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if CPS had shown up to one of these? I mean, if CPS. Oh, they did. C child services used to oh, show up to Shangri La every once in a while, and we play. Oh no, they're good people. They're good. No, it's fine. Everything's right? fine. Everything's good. Everything's great. Because Everything's we're good Scientologists and good standing, so you don't like snitch. You're not allowed to snitch. Now let's say to a cop, yeah, they're beating their kid. You're not allowed to say that. You're allowed to, you know, they're going to, don't worry, we'll get it fixed in auditing. So let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Sorry. That's sad. No, um, it's, it's, I mean, but see, here's the thing is like, first of all, the accountability in action, kids. Yeah. She said that the talking, other day. Talking about what we participated in. We all have trauma. We all are, you know, could stand here on our soapbox and be like, I'm a victim of Scientology, but that's not what any of this is about. It's about like, this is what happened. This is truth. And here's what I did. And then like, let's, this is why Scientology has to be stopped because not only did it do shitty shit to me, but 
as a Scientologist, I did these things Shitty because that's what we believed people. in. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's we were in there, we were doing it. It's not like a secret. Like we weren't the one Scientologist that was just like, oh, I'm just gonna like hide over here while all the bad stuff's happening. Oh, look it, it's a party time. Like <laughs> there wasn't there's there's zero Scientologists that can say that. Zero that can say I never did anything wrong to anybody else. Well, but during my time, there's probably zero I, I people that can say that. I just had yeah. wins, but let's be honest though. Even in your mundane participation, take a person who was never in the CR, didn't have kids, just was paying the money to go and do courses and stuff. That in itself is contributing to child trafficking, human trafficking, all of the things that were going on in that org. And they knew that there was kids supervising them, that there's kids auditing them. They're paying for that. So even the person who is just like, mm, you know, I just went in and I had wins and it was fun. Like, sorry, that's, you saw the things that you saw and you didn't go, what? I don't speak Greek. I wish I did. I mean, <laughs> it's too. all Greek to me. Because was... I am Greek and I'm ashamed that oh, I, I don't. See. My wow. grandfather, he came here as an illegal alien and um, stole a name off a gravestone. Had is that true? Kids. Yeah, no, it's, oh, it's all true. High story. five. He, That's awesome. Yeah, right? he, just, he came here and he stole what he thought was a super American name, Emil John Sova. So not like, you know, John. Joe Schmo, right? Right. John was in there. Right. Um, had his kids. They were all baptized in the Greek church, in the Greek Orthodox church. And then he passed away when my dad was seven. Um, and then my grandmother remarried very quickly after that. And then they, you know, no connection to Greece. So unfortunately, yeah. No. But I want to. I no, want that's to. that's the American. That's that's the thing about American immigrants. We lose it. <laughs> we lose whatever wherever it is we came from. That's how you become right. American. Um, I think something like that. Well, no, absolutely. You blend. <laughs> you, yeah. You, you're just blend. reunification. Let's just call it what it is. Reunification. <laughs> I got into the weirdest argument with a woman the other day who was saying that that slavery and genocide, American slavery and genocide were part of God's plan to reunify humanity in the new world, in, Uni in the United States of America. Because now in America, there's people from all over the world. And that was supposedly part of the plan to get it there. I would, I, I, I did you lose your shit? Did you, I did had you say to, to this really person? Say, I said that's, you know, well, it started because at first she said something about Native Americans. And I said, well, yeah, we took it. We took everything from them. And she right. said the word savages. And as a black woman, but she said Native American mm -hmm. savages. And that's what started it. And I was like, wait, what? You can't just I, say something like that. I would have like to walk that. away what from that conversation. I'm yeah, proud so of you. <laughs> I would and then she you. went on to the whole thing about, about. Uh, slavery being part of yeah. God's plan oh, to, no. to bring African no, no, people no. to the to the to North America, um, which you know they might have gotten here all by themselves. <laughs> yeah, know? I mean the thing they, they the thing to. about people in general that have that firm belief that is a rewriting of history by yeah. the extreme right uh, evangelical. Well, this is Christians coming from to, a very this is you know a Caribbean uh, immigrant black woman who's probably a Jehovah's Christian? Witness. Yeah, she was clearly yeah, very, that's, very that's Christian. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 This so is, that's this extreme... is the, the Christian's interpretation that wants to like put in the textbooks in Texas schools, which is actually there now, that the slaves were volunteers. They're volunteers. Yeah. yeah. That's what they're I, teaching kids in Texas well, now. You no, know what's sick about that is like the indentured servitude that, that <clears> led <throat> to actual slavery it, it technically it's a volunteer. You volunteer <laughs> your slave, your enslaved self, so that right. you can get out of out of uh, captivity or or out right. of some sort of financial place. So you can sell yourself into slavery. So you're right. That's a choice. But that's not what happened. No. <laughs> you know that was there already, and they yeah. took that and went. Now let's lock it into place. Oh yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, so you can never it, get it, away. again. Like you, like you made the comment about DoorDash and convenience. Slavery was a way for white people, rich white people, to not have to labor. Yeah. You know, and it's all all of these things, cults, slavery, all these things are a way of control, are a way of domination, and a way for rich people to remain in power. Yeah. Yeah. It's always yeah. about that. Um, yeah. Let's address this comment that's here from SM. Yeah, because it made if, me. If Miscavige left Scientology, 
and we're talking about David Miscavige, of course, uh, and started talking against Scientology, would he too be forgiven? No more questions asked. He himself never even did anything. Would it be the same? No. Then why Mike Rinder? Um, so I'll, I'll address this since this is clearly a question to me uh, because of my last life. So first of all, um, if David Miscavige were to leave Scientology and spill all the beans and get, you know, like name the names, time, place, form, and event, and get Scientology's 501c3 status revoked, and That's you know, get the kids out of Scientology and release all the people that have been human trafficked across the country, and make sure all of the known assets were there uh, to be held and got everybody refunded. Um, and, uh, you know, sold off all these BS buildings they have all over the country and gave it back to the communities that it came from, then I could say, good job to him. Now, uh, thank you for the fireworks. But if he did all of that, I'm not, okay. you know, forgiving Mike Rinder for all the things. I think that's what Dave Miscavige should do. Um, that's what the Catholic Church should do. That's a lot and of people should do. A lot of why should do. not Mike Rinder? Um, Are we forgiving? So, like, why is Mike Rinder being forgiven for all the things I think and just percent. allowed to allowed to walk? Because he? he he did the frog in the pot, guys. He came out, and if you go back to the beginning of his blog, he was still very much a Scientologist. He was talking about the benefits. He was talking about things, about how auditing is still good. Him and Marty were on the same track of like, Scientology is good. It's just the leader that's bad. And then slowly they diverged and Marty kept being a Scientologist. And Mike was like, well, now I'm going to try this not Scientology thing. And Marty went off into his whole guru. When does the whatever. HBO documentary come in? Right. So. Going Clear talks about that. But then, like I've broken down before, Marty was going to be the guy that sat next to Leah in the show. Right. But what had happened, because he was wife. number two, what had happened was is Scientology did what it always does. It found Marty's Achilles heel, which was his wife. And, yeah, and his I kid. did not condone anything that happened to his wife. I did not like people who considered themselves to be anti-Scientologists, to be attacking a woman who never had anything to do with Scientology. Her unfortunate choice was to marry this guy who she fell in love with, who happened to be a very high ranking ex member. That's her only quote unquote crime. And that's not something that's punishable by what happened to her in a psychological warfare. And then people trying to destroy her business, including people who consider themselves anti Scientologists. I don't, I don't condone that at all. So he did what any logical person who's genuinely in love with the person that they're partnered with would do. He shut the fuck up and went away and he probably took a big paycheck and that's fine. I don't begrudge him for doing that, for protecting his family in that moment. Yeah. So then we turn to Mike. And now Mike's the superhero, right? Because he still has uh -huh. a lot of a lot of info. But I can tell you what, he's not forgiven in many circles by many people who had dealings with him. Um, and that's the problem that we see now. Is that when you don't tell all of it or pretend that you weren't part of things that you were a part of, um, and try and schluff it off on somebody else or on the organization, then you get yourself in the scenario we're in here, yep. right? Because, it, you know, we we know where the receipts are and we know where uh, the truth is. And truth is important. It's part of the healing process is to know, you know, like when you're getting info about your dad, Daniel, and you're finding out things about him that you didn't know, that, you know, can sometimes hurt but also help you heal at the same time, because yeah. truth does that. Yeah. It, you know, well, understanding like saying, where he free. was coming from, why he was what he was, and why he did what he did. Better, yeah. If nothing else, because you take it on personally, especially as a yeah. kid. You're like, oh, he hates me. He's rejected me. And especially when he's right across the street. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, okay. Clearly, he got no time for me. And you're like, and the only saving grace in a weird way was that knowing that he did this, he ghosted the other, Josh and Jamie too. Like, it's not like he gave special attention to. Like Elton John has this whole thing about his father went off and married somebody else and had two kids that he was really nice to. And you couldn't be nice to, to his first kid because he hated his right. wife. But, um, yeah. you know, it's not like he was nice to some other kids, but he just wasn't, he just didn't connect with his kids at all. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, it, and that's not an uncommon theme in Sea Org parents. Oh, yep. 
Did we lose him? Hit a button. The dog hit a button. <laughs> the dog definitely hit a button. Um, I don't think he notices. Well, what we can do is this. Um, uh, I know that it is almost at two hours, everybody. I need to take care of some things here. Um, Daniel, I love you. I'll call you. Um, Nora, stop doing it, Nora. I'm gonna mess you up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna monkey. I'm gonna throw poop at you. Oh, so let's pop back in real quick. So Daniel, <laughs> and we were the dog hit a button. <laughs> yeah. So what we were saying is it's been almost it's been almost two hours, and I've got to run some errands real oh, quick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys want to finish? You're oh, you can't because we you can can't we can stream. peace out. No, you gotta. You, right. It's your stream, honey. You gotta close yeah. it. It's all good, yeah. Daniel. We're gonna talk later, and I yeah. wanna when you launch your catching up with mustard, uh, we gotta do a thing. All right, Heck yeah. And definitely. if you are not yeah. yet I'm subscribed excited. to Catching Up I'm with Mustard. I'm actually going to see Jamie this it's week. It's Catch Up with Mustard. Catch Up with Mustard. mustard. Just catch, catch Up with Mustard. C-A-T-C-H-U-P is one word with mustard. So it looks yeah. like okay. Catch Up and Mustard. Jamie, you're going to see Jamie? I'm going to see Jamie. Oh, okay. I haven't seen him. Not, on, not on the YouTubes, in real life. In real, yeah. in the real yeah. world. Wow. In well, the real world. I will. I will. Yeah. Well, we've got to get. And if you guys are, if you're ever up here in Portland, let's hang. Yeah, definitely. Know. Portland seems yeah. like a good place to be. Yeah. We're up there keeping it weird, right? Uh, always. Always. <laughs> always keeping it weird. Well, thank you so very much, everyone. Please, if you are not yet subscribed to the amazing Daniel, please definitely smash it. Just do the the smash the oh, like yeah. and hit subscribe. And, like and, and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Subscribe. A. Yes. I need to, yeah, there we go. Listen to He songs. says sexy things, everybody. I'm telling you. He might even sing for you. There it is. So. Um, love you all. Thank you for much, so much for coming, and we will talk to you later. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Oh, hearts, that's cute. Bye.